Nine three dollars. Win City six eighty. Grand Performance seven eighty. Just checking those dividends again. My trifecta. And the man who developed his talents is David Matz, who trains the. Thank you, mate. David Matz, trainer. Happy running of the missile stakes. A line moving in with Celestial Choir racing. Patsto and Celestial Choir a shade slow to go. Fast out Bomber Bill and Vigil began quickly, is showing a lot of early speed and grand performance going through. Wind City's performance just in front of Bomber Bill. Two links away, Vigil outside of Wind City, the box seat, two links a line. Celestia Choir back second, last five off the lead. And two links to his stable mate, and that's Padstow as they near the corner. 500 metres to go, grand performance to Nova Castrian flying along from Bomber Bill and Vigil. Wind City hugging the fence, looking for a run. Celestial Choir went around a line. He's come to the outside and Padstow with the last crack at them. 3.50 to go. Grand performance running the race of a life, taken on by Bomber Bill. Wind City getting the run. Padstow letting down with a terrific run from Celestial Choir. A line can't get a run. It's Padstow storming up to Wind City. Padstow's hit the front. He's going to avenge his unlucky protest defeat in the race last year. And Padstow careering away for John Size and Len Beasley. Padstow wins the missile. Wind City has run second. Celestial choir was third then bomber bill in the line they were followed by grand performance and last home was vigil well padstow he won the race last year by an absolute breath only to lose it on protest but this year having it taken away in the stewards room um, by commands one of jack and bob ingham's talk about poetic justice john size Oh, well, every dog has his stage, I mean, I guess, but uh, there won't be any protest today, and he has absolutely candid him, hasn't he? Were you surprised? Right. Okay, now let's take you back to, and honour the name on top, 100 ahead of Joshua's Pride, 93, and one, number five, Dandy Kid is $20, uh, six, a Durka, 9.30, Miss Penny Money, 3.30, Londa Losey, 32, and Magic Music is $8.90. The favourite, Magic Music, Proven performer at top level, likewise sports, a group one winner last autumn. Mike Giscard, Zar Hero, Joshua's pride wide out from Mastic and Londolosi. 400 metres to go, Miss Penny Money, three wide, goes up to join Magic Music and Sports the centre. St Chris off a length away, wide out from Sadurka, honour the name. End of the straight, Miss Penny Money and Magic Music together, Sports third, then Dandy Kid and St Chris off, but Miss Penny Money went to the lead of the 200. She got a length and a half in front, Magic Music, Dandy Kid's getting out and running on well. Miss Penny Money, 100 to go in front, Dandy Kid coming after her, Miss Penny Money grabbed by Dandy Kid on the inside, Dandy Kid did best. Dandy Kid beat Miss Penny Money, three away St. Chris off. Then Joshua's pride and honour the names, our hero. Mastic next in, sports knocked up. And uh, he's just now getting his act together. Dandy Kid, 14.50 and 4.30. Miss Penny Money, 180. St. Chris off, 4.30. Winner, we can let you go and get ready. OK, thanks, Wayne. Yeah, he had a bit of trouble getting here, but he'll make sure uh, we know that he's here on Dynamic Love, John. Hey, and uh, what a... Good rider he is. So recapping your selections here in the Group 2 San Domenico Stakes, Wayne. Puts the Riz on top, number four to beat one Kudama two, three Continuum and five. Hey, four. To go. They're racing in the San Domenico and from the inside, Dynamic Love away fairly. Preserve was slow and first out, out wide, happy giggle with eight eights and going quickly. Zariz looking for the lead. Continuum up in the leading group of horses with Holy Honey. Kutumutu is trapped out very wide. Tree Lopper on the inside. Further back, Happy Giggle getting back now, followed by Dynamic Love, second last as they come down the side. And being hard ridden as they go by the 600 metre mark, Kaipera and Preserve dropped out last. Zariz leads on the turn. Kutamutu on the outside of Tree Lopper, Holy Honey, 8.8s, eight followed wide out on the track by Fuadi. And endeavouring to improve between runners coming to the turn. Happy Giggle gets to the outside. Dynamic Love's looking for a run at the 300 metre mark. And Zariz dashed for home. It's two lengths in front of Kutamutu. Down the outside, Happy Giggle and Fuadi. The Queenslander Zariz is clear over the final stages. Here comes another Queenslander, Dynamic Love into second. But Zariz is going to blitz them in the San Domenico. Zariz won by two and a half lengths. Collis gave us a wave. Dynamic Love second. Queensland won two. Third, Kudamutu followed by Fuadi. Eight eights continuum and preserve ran on. Followed by Happy Giggle. Well back the others headed up by Holy Honey. Then Tree Lopper and last of Love. But the wraps on this colt are huge, and we can see why. That's six starts, four wins, and one thirties by Mooka Damar out of Divine Dash. Raced by I and Mrs. L. Ford. Uh, it's two runs this time now. He surprised me. You know, I didn't think he could do what he'd done at Doombin, um, as easy as what he did it. And today, when he missed the start, I thought, oh, this is all right. He's sitting back third yeah. last. He's terrific. He's but gone up to lead. He got up to lead. I was surprised a little when he was in front. But quite I don't know. Cold, hard light of day today. Uh, do you still stand by your word that it was incredible, his performance? Yeah, definitely. Not very often you see horses 
sit three wide like that. I know there's only one turn at White Farm, but sat three wide, dragged me to the front where I was meant to be running fourth or fifth. And um, with two smacks around the bum, top in the straight, he just accelerated. His acceleration was impressive, yeah, it was very impressive. He's Corey a very competitive horse. He is. He, um, yeah, he's, he's very competitive, like he'll put himself anywhere. Gerald said if I could to come down the outside, but, um, oh no, he'll race anywhere, and yeah, he's, he's a very talented horse. He didn't jump cleanly either, did Thank he? You all quiet, seven wins, 71, Adam. Here's the toad call, Adam. At 480, 250, Mr. Innocent, Align, 12, 24, Celestial Choir, Padstow, 330, Zaskov, 43, and Wind City, $8.24. Ready to run. This is the premiere where Mr. Innocent... It's the field of seven. Tempo of the race important. They're racing. Win City fast out. Padstow last to go. And Mr. Innocent began quickly. Adam is boring through looking for the early lead. And the line's going up to be in third. Seven lengths away from the Nova Castrian. And that is Adam. He's in charge. Leading by a length and a half on Win City. A line on the fence. And Mr. Innocent fourth. They were followed by Celestial Choir. Padstow out three wide. About to go forward around the stable mate Zaz Tov. Coming towards the bend, 600 out. And it's this courageous little horse, Adam in front, Beedman sitting against him. Little length on Wind City, a line on the fence. Mr. Innocent about to be called upon us. Padstow hooks wide with Zaztov. And Celestial Choir last. Oh, Zaztov uh, ran into Padstow there, who was momentarily put off balance at the 300. Adam in front of Wind City. Mr. Innocent given full bore. And he's coming with his run now from a line. Then Celestial Choir. Padstow not coming at the moment. Mr. Innocent, collars, hands and heels. Now he draws the weapon away. He went in the premier he shot away mr innocent celestial choir late adams kicking again but mr innocent brains them and wins it by two and a half links celestial choir second then came adam third from win city a line well back zaztov i don't think she did pasta uh, padsto the world of good she gave him a severe clout on the bend and he came in last oh it's all yours mel congratulations thanks love well, thanks love <laughs> they better well, shout the bar it? on me at the pier eh thanks the second His most impressive wins ever, Mr. Innocent at 5 to 4, Celestial Choir 16 to 1, Darren Beedman's Mount Adam at 8 to 1. Winner's a stallion, he's now won, won 13 out of 31 and um, more than $1.4 million and he's the first horse uh, since Joanne to win the Premier back to back. Let's hear from... Toby keeps a great horse, when he lets down it takes a good horse to beat him. Today's win really puts the writing on the wall for you over the past couple of months, haven't they? Oh, well, yeah. But uh, we won't give up, Gav. No, that's right. You've given up the fags, haven't you? Fat and sex. <laughs> really? <laughs> Don't you feel sorry for me? I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. He's agreeing to train Mr. Innocent. And the second smartest thing was giving away those stinking cigarettes. Mm. Yeah. Would be a finally done. He smoked? 90 a day. Yeah. You wouldn't have one out of your mouth, no, would you? I don't no. think so. Darren? Set the run for the Manicato. About to go. Racing. Mastic out fairly, flavour slow to move and Cullen bounded away. St. Chris I've got away pretty well too and Sunline's right up there second and third. Dandy Kid onto the name just off them and Miss Penny Money settling down about sixth. In the run of the first turn now pressure of plenty. Cullen from Sunline and Dandy Kid three wide. A length and a half to St. Chris off settling fourth on the rail and then Sir Boom onto the name on the inside followed by Slavonic very wide and then Miss Penny Money. A length Mastic and Bulkhead and then Vetti Via. Olive the twist next to last and two to flavor up the side cullen just led from sunline on the outside and dandy kid three deep sunline raced into the lead took about a neck advantage before the turn then slavonic ensign chris off a length away so boom hard and written, written then came onto the name and miss penny money pulled to the outside but sunlines dashed for home around the turn and the champion mare opened up a couple of lengths and chris off coming home well on the inside then came dandy kid hard written and miss penny money with a challenge but sunline with a good lead in the straight miss penny money two and a half behind her chasing and trying hard but the champion is home again sunline opening up and racing away and this super mare sunline wins it by three onto the name miss penny money third and then came sir boom followed by oliver twist and bulkhead behind them vetty vias and chris of dandy kid knocked up with slavonic mastic flavor and color a bad last why would any of us have doubted her chances of winning today just the most dominant and comprehensive win as you would expect 
of this mare retaining what is an unbelievable record being unbeaten first up unbeaten at the distance and now remaining unbeaten at Mooney Valley another group one on the strat there where she's won three occasions took it from the front and demolished her rivals with a wonderful turn of acceleration from the 400 she's run the last 423.8 the last 200 in 11.9 and she's killed them Supermare, well Thames Shaboom, at his sixth attempt at the race, he's run a terrific race in the circumstances and fifth Oliver Twist. Just how good is she? She's got to be the greatest mare to have raced for God knows how long, so many, many years. Proven here today against Miss Penny Money, who's a Group 1 winner, but uh, she was just all fast and as I said, they just couldn't keep up basically. Got a foot in the door already, she's up and running, and uh, it feels great to be back on. I certainly do, but her performance yesterday, oh my god, I'd love to. I would love to have been at Mooney Valley. You can hear it coming back, all the all the euphoria. It was something special. It was heartbreaking for those behind, but uh, great horses do that, and she is a champion there, and I know that she'll be horse of the year. Yeah, okay. Gosh, what a well, 15 to 8 Sunline, Joe McKinnon uh, took off like a Bondi bus at Canterbury to grab the 15 to 8 yesterday. <laughs> and got it. Tw 20 to 1, honour the name, and 9 to 4, Miss Penny Money. I've, I've, I've known few people. How good is she? Here? Can she get any better than that? Well, I feel myself this year that uh, it's going to be her best year altogether. She's so much better and stronger than herself, so uh, you probably will have to look out a little bit. I wish you'd let And uh, she's found enough in herself. And horse so of the year? Continue. Well, be of of the uh, I think we could be. Yeah, I think We've always been New Zealand horse of the year, so uh, to, to win the double would be very nice. The percentages here, Sunline came out on top, way out in front, with 45.26, ahead of Ty the Knot, Testarossa, and uh, Fairway. Now, well, you've got a higher in the race coming up. Now, I heard you say in an interview maybe six months ago that this horse had been over-boomed and overplayed by the media. Do you still hold with that? Oh, not so much. I think at the time it was, John, I like my horses to, uh, to, you know, to earn their stripes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think now, well, he has to stand up and be counted now. I mean, he was unlucky in the Doncaster and a, and a few other... Traditionally a 1,400 metre race, but on the new track and the new venue, they had to reduce the distance. To call the Warwick... Hire about to move in for the running of the Warwick Stakes, a race that has been won by some of the greats of the turf. Kingston Town on three occasions, superimposed twice, Volante twice. And the great on Zeregal. Three lengths away is Celestial Choir and Quinn now starting to stoke up. Hyrie wants to go forward. Four lengths away to Tributes and five lengths is Kirkstall Lane as they approach the bend. Al Mansour in front and he's running along, leading by a length on Zeregal. Hyre about to come out wide. Celestial Choir tracks up on the fence and the others headed by Tributes as they turn. Al Mansour will straighten up by a length and a half. Hyre is given full bore on the outside. Al Mansour at the 200 mark over a length in front. Hyre's having a battle to get on terms from Celestial Choir, but Al Mansour's got a kick in the locker. At the 100, he raced two lengths in front of Hire. Hire can do no more. Al Mansour in front, and he's run them right off their legs in the Warwick Stakes. Al Mansour by over a length to Hire. Third prize, Celestial Choir, then Zeregal Tributes, and Kirkstall Lane last home. That's the Warwick Stakes. Second prize going to Hire. Beaten, but not disgraced. John Hawks and Rod Quinn. And third, Al Mansour, five to two, Darren Beedman, and that was one of four for the day for John Size. Five to four on and favourite higher, and four to one Celestial Choir. Joe, spectating fashion. All right, uh, the race was robbed. Can I call again from Jack in the morning? I just couldn't believe it because everything was 101% up till Thursday after he had another hard hit out with horses absolutely jumping out of his skin. Uh, he's lost nothing in the way of... Uh, of how he wants to race, and uh, well, it was just it was just a, a great shock. Nick, what if I would say that uh, he'll be racing Saturday week. Have you considered retiring him, Nick, through all of this? No, because I said I'll retire him if it's, if it's a problem, but he hasn't got the problem. He wants to race, Joe. He really does want to race, and uh, I feel he'd be able to get. And they're all set. All set. Ready to jump. Zara is just a bit fidgety. Gate one settles now. Racing, Zaria's jump moderately. Great Crusader sprung out of the gate. He went to the front from Century Kid and Zaria's now rallying through on the rail from Kudamudu and Phoenix Park. 
They were followed by Assertive Lad and Fuwadi at the tail of the field. Century Kid 600 out, one in front of Zar Riz, travelling up comfortably. Three quarters away is Great Crusader from Kuta Mudu, Assertive Lad starting a run, but he's a fair way back with Fuwadi. And Phoenix Park has been shuffled back to the tail, but only three lengths covers the field as they turn the bend. 3.50 to go, Century Kid in front. York riding confidently on Zar Riz, Kuta Mudu three out, then Phoenix Park looking for a run, Assertive Lad's well back and doing zilch. At the 200 mark, and he now lets down the favourite, and Zar Riz had sprinted. He raced a length in front of Century Kid, who's fighting on well, then Phoenix Park and Kuta Mudu, but Zariz is coming right away, wanted to duck in, but he's too good. Zariz wanted two lengths to Century Kid and Kuta Mudu. Then Phoenix Park, well back, Great Crusader, Fuwadi, and assertive lad, Stone Motherless last. Easy win to Zariz, connections of Zariz would be jumping for joy. On the other hand, connections of assertive lad would be wondering what's happened. The wheels are but still, nevertheless, it's been a very fine performance. His time is 1941. Every word that means fast. And Crusader uh, Fuwadi and five to four on and favourite. He's still learning. Uh, when he got to the front there, he got the wanders. He didn't know where he was. Sixteen to one Century Kid and eleven to one Kutamutu. Well, uh, here is the usually reserved mm -hmm. price. Average. Yep. I thought Phoenix Park's run, Joe, was, was quite good. He um, he battled on well here. You see him in third, fourth spot here, the chestnut horse in the, the green and blue. And he battled on well. He had a little bit of a bumping duel with Kutamutu on the outside, and uh, there was a bit of a shuffle up in front, which blocked him. But uh, I thought he ran quite well. Um, assertive lad was a big disappointment because all the, uh, the pundits did say that it, they thought he looked ready to do something. He looked pretty yeah. fit. So uh, I thought he was pretty disappointing. But... Once it, I have to agree with you there. Yesterday's performance with Zariz was far more assertive than oh, the I week before. Yeah, it, it was, was, wasn't it? It was. Mm. It was like uh, he, mm -hmm. when he made the... From Dynamic Love, Unworldly, Preserve 1, 3, 7 and 2. Here's the total call for uh, 8, 8, 30. Happy Empress at 46, an hour of 50 cents. But uh, Dynamic Love and Unworldly are having a stirring duel for favouritism with dynamic love the favorite the last time she was here she up racing lady milan went up in the air at the start she was very slow to go french braids and eight eights away very quickly with arathea dynamic love is showing plenty of speed near the inside and happy empress not far away as french braids eases to be in about fifth position eight eights across onto the fence led by two links happy empress trouble back in the field she's purring was checked third is arathea fourth dynamic love the fence they were followed moving up out wider on the track by holy honey french braids inside of her unworldly starting a run a good six lengths off the lead just in front of her she's purring then preserved donna dior and last of all lady milan in the silver shadow as they approach the bend it's the Dubbo flying filly eight eights in front by a length. Collis angling out on Dynamic Love and she trotted up on the outside to be second. Then Happy Empress and Unworldly pulled to the outside running on. Eight eights still in front. Dynamic Love can't pick up the Dubbo filly. Eight eights a length in front of Dynamic Love and Unworldly starting to whiz home. Little eight eights clinging on for dear life. She's going to do it all the way in the silver shadow. Great win. Eight eights by a long neck Dynamic Love or Unworldly. Then Lady Milan, who's made up tremendous ground from Preserve and Donna Dior. Happy Empress, Arathea well back, she's purring, French braids knocked up. Holy honey, last in. The time is 19.94, which is a fast run home, 35.55. So as you can see from that... It go very well in the race. I, I thought a run the other day was enormous. She got three or four checks. He didn't go forward on her. He didn't ride her over the shoulder. That's why he didn't ride her today. I rang Brian York a week ago, begging him to ride it, and it, they mm. ummed an and he took the ride on it. Yeah, does she have to lead, or she's at least got to be... 14 to 1, 8 8s, 7 to 4 favourite Dynamic Love, had a chance, wasn't disgraced, just not good enough on the day, and 2 to 1 unworldly, and boy is she screaming for a trip. The winner has now won JJ Liston Stakes, Lex Zagaletta 100, Mystic Morse 90, Typhoon 90, and Dandy Kid 90, and a big field of 16 in the Liston. Now on number For sure, we're back at Sandy and a day over 14, you've drawn five. There's a little bit of speed in the race too. Yeah, um, it'd be nice if we could just drop in and get some cover. Um, I think the lead as well, so we know... Mustic 49, the Zagaletta $6, the Hind 82, Ancient City 49, Go Flash Go 940, Scoozy Please $10, Mystic Morse 20, 
Dandy Kid 980, Honour the Name $7, Inner Flurry's out, Londolosi Ford, his last win at Eagle Farm last time in work in the uh, Reckless, which was a listed race over 1600, was very good. I think he's nice and forward. He'll sit up on the speed, go flash, go too. And I'm putting in number 17, of course that being Zarpiste, the mare, she won first up last. Racing now. Missed the start about three quarters, La Zagaletta. Otherwise, a good dispatch. And Zarpiste, one of the first out. Londolazi Scusi, please. Got away well towards the inside. And Go Flash Go is up there as well. Set late. About a length and a half to die. Tribe Ancient City, two to Typhoon. Delirious well off the pace. And the hind last of all. Go Flash Go led on to the name at the 800 metres. A length and a half. Londolazi Scusi, please. The rail one. Zarpiste, fourth. Uh, they're being followed by La Zagaletta over on the inside of Dandy Kid. And then Mystic Morse off the track from Adelta. Shazu, worse in midfield on the rail from Ancient City, Mastic and Diatribe. Well back as Delirious Typhoon and two to the hind as they corner. Go Flash, go and honour the name, come round the bend together from Londolazi, Zarpiece wider out. Scoozy please in behind them from Dandy Kid, Lazagaletta searching for an out. And uh, they were trailed then by Mastic as they got to the 250. Go Flash, go and honour the name together. Dandy Kid coming home well, Lazagaletta not in the clear. Scoozy please running on fairly from Ad Alta. Go Flash, go in front, Scoozy please, Dandy Kid. Kid coming after Go Flash Go and then Ad Elder. But the uh, Go Flash Go is being tackled by Scoozy Please and Ad Elder. They hit the line. Scoozy Please got there and wanted a nose to Go Flash Go. Ad Elder close up third. And then Diatribe, a far better run from the unlucky Lazagaletta. And then Zarp Peace. Delirious Ancient City followed further back by Dandy Kid and the Hind. And then came on to the name which weakened in the run home from Typhoon, Mastic, Shazu, never in the hunt. Londa lays it towards the end and Mystic Morse, one of the last to go over the line. Effort by this horse today, Graham. Yeah, you know, he's, he's been a good horse. He's only had the two runs for us. He's won them both. Mm. He had no luck in the run. Couldn't get a run and had to pull back and got a run and ended up winning, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's formally trained by Roger James. Uh, early doors, a lot of potential, this horse. Well, this horse coming back in now at Alta. Was a coming back in now at Alta. Was a fan. Thing and starting like that. No, Lazaga Letta needs to get out and have one clear crack at them, Tappy. You can see him following Scoot. need four pairs of eyes to pick the good runs in the list and stakes. Uh, there were good runs galore. None better than a horse called Diatribe. Uh, George Hanlon must have been tickled oh. pink with his first up run. Far better run from the behind. Well, there you go. Nine to one, Scoozy, please. Seven to one, Go Flash Go. Thirteen to two, Ad Alta. Lazagaletta had no luck. Had to stop and start most of the way down the straight at four to one. And did you spot Diatribe getting to the line? Need a little bit more room, didn't he, Tappy, for a uh, staying type like him? Sort of needs one run to get out and get going, but uh, he finished his race off good. Dizzy looked. Brett thinks if he'd have got out the top of the straight instantly. Dan Defy, 97. Dreaming on 87 and Outgate 83. Here is the full market on the Peter Pan. 1 0 Drama 840, 2 Ray Rinker 32, number 3 Marauder 660 and 4 C's 113, Dandify 330 and Dreaming on 15. Fairway winning the race, the first leg of the Triple Crown last year, then taking out the crown. 321. Brocade out, and they're racing in the Peter Pan. Outgate, Foreign Seas, and Free Ranger drop back after the kick. Zero Drama came out of the machine running, and he went to the front with Fuwadi and two or three lengths away. To the 1,000 metres mark, and it's Dandify fourth last. Free Ranger with it, two lengths to Foreign Seas. At the tail of the field with Go Bet as they come to the 650. Zero Drama in front, a long neck on Fuwadi. Marauder three wide, Danishenka on the fence between them, fantastic. Here's the filly dreaming on, coming out start. A run. They were followed by Re Rinka, Outgate with nowhere to go on the fence. Viper Corp wide, Dandify strung up in traffic and Free Ranger switching to the outside in the straight. And Fuwadi at the 400 mark had raced up to zero drama. Marauder after the pair, back to the fence, Outgate getting a run, finishing it on strongly. Then came Dreaming on, Dandify, they're right across the track. Fuwadi in front of Outgate, zero drama kicking and here is Dandify coming with a screaming run. Dandify the filly from the back, swamped them, race to the front and Dandify a great winner untouched went home and killed them in the Peter Pan Outgate got second, Free Ranger late for third, Zero Drama Danashenka, Fuwadi close up they were followed by Dreaming On, Go Bent Thuntastic, Wellback, Re Rinker Viper Corp, they were followed by Foreign Seas and Marauder pulling up quickly with the tail enders gee that's been a win she was a mile back, they've come home 35.06, she's got down to near 34 Gardens, Beryl White of course 
uh, endeavours uh, to come up with a new white and purple ensemble at the race. For third, had Stewart afoot. Brian, you rode zero drama, which led, and you just hacked them in the middle stages. Yeah, I reckon from the 1200 to the 600, I was going about 13 of the furlong, so that made her performance all the better because she yeah. came from a long way back in the field, yeah. Yeah. and the sectionals that we ran mid-race, it would have been very hard for her to, to come from where she was and still win. And even before the, the furlong point there, she was in a fairly awkward position. You were position. still in front here in the white colours. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, as you said, I'd gone pretty easy, so he, he was stuck to the front for a, queer, for a fair while, but she spitted so quickly, I don't know what she's won in the last 600, but I reckon it was pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Brian, Brad Stewart, don't know much about him. Uh, just watching his ride on this horse yesterday for Jack Denham, a bit of pressure there for the stable, as you're well aware of. Um, Danny Beasley to ride. Uh, Wind City tops the Sky ratings. Glenn Collis to ride for Ron Quinton. 100, referral 93, land sighting 93. 510, referral $14. What a cracker field. Land sighting 340, return to go $11. Wind Seam Star $10, Condotti 11 Sorrento 69. Otis. Wild cards for the placing show. Number 10, Condotti. He's obviously done a lot of work. Uh, came into the enclosure looking a treat. Little Adam to come up. Crawl out of the line. Condotti yet to move in and all set. Gates open. Palladium star and referral slow to go. Wind City flew out of the gate and land sighting began quickly. Showing speed as Hellenic Prince. Adam's not far away from now. Back King of Acapulco. Crawl. They were followed by Palladium star. And referral last of all. It's a good tempo, 650 out. Wind City, Hellenic Prince, the outside together. Little Adams, two lengths away, chasing. They were followed by Land Siding, outside of Night to Remember. Well back, Condotti. They were followed by Sorrento, Zaztov, return to go. King of Acapulco, Palladium Stars, well back. Referral to the outside from Crawl in the straight. Hellenic Prince had moved up and had dashed to the front from Wind City. Then came Adam and now Land Siding and Condotti coming with a strong run. They were followed by Sorrento and further out, King of Acapulco. Porco, Condotti's hit the lead. Condotti in front of Land Siding. Running on King of Acapulco. Palladium Star jumping out of the ground late, but going clear. Condotti. Condotti in front. Palladium Star flying too late. Condotti's beaten Palladium Star. Crawls in a photo with Sorrento and not far away King of Acapulco. Land Siding behind those. Then Zaztov. Hellenic Prince. They were followed by Knights to Remember. Adam Wellback returned to go. Win City and referral and has raced away to score a strong victory from Palladium Star who has been, I would guess, a tragedy beat. He just couldn't get a crack at them. Crack at them. Porco 430, Quinella 3140, Trifecta 680. Far away, King of Acker, Porco. Condotti. Today, our dramatic improvement because he's a very big growth horse and he will go ahead enormously after today. Even Resonaire 76, Viner's Lane 31. Uh, go down to Integrate, uh, down to Carpstad Way 11, Resonair 76, Viner's Lane 31. Uh, go down to Integrate, 8.20, Tall Poppy 7.50, favourite in New Zealand, Tall Poppy, and Cinderella $10. To Hastings and Tony Lee. Before the running of the Group 2, Mudgeway Part 12 stakes are all in. Tall Poppy, the favourite off three in the gold and black. Ready? Racing in a Mudgeway. Sharon a touch slow off the inside. Kingdom uh, Come has got back as to then has Aerosmith and Calf Start Way. Viner's Lane came out quickly, but Tall Poppy showing more speed at a lead from Molasses and Buster Brookfield. Pressure's on. Sind Way off the back of the 850 and the jewel on up top. Viner's Lane outside of Tall Poppy. Buster Brookfield's right on them and Cinderella's getting the run of the race. Molasses is fifth around Resonare and Sharon. The message around Ruakiwi Lad and sent home. Kingdom Come on the inside side at the 600. Integrate's about to go forward. Aerosmith second to last. And Carp Sardway is last of all. Coming down the side just before the home corner in the Mudgeway. Tall Poppy urged a bit just in front of Viner's Lane. Cinderella behind them. Buster Brookfield coming around the outside and Rezanare's wider out. Sharon's getting up in behind them. Buster Brookfield has gone up. Rezanare's coming with it on the outside. Sharon desperate for room and sent home starting to fly down the outside. We've got Buster Brookfield Field. Now Sharon's getting through and sent home. Sharon sent home and Buster Brookfield. Oh boy, what a finish. Very, very close. Sharon sent home and Buster Brookfield, I wouldn't be sure. And how unlucky Cinderella. Resonare Kingdom come. Carp start by Aerosmith behind them. Then Viner's Lane, Tall Poppy. Ruiki will add the message. The next home then has been Molasses. It'll be the last home in the Mudgeway of 2000. Grand...
210, Sharon 180, and Buster Brookfield $9. So the numbers are three. They're all set. Racing. Zar Resnick the kick. He was about third last to go. Veteran fired out of the machine. Going fast, Phoenix Park to head him. Zar Riz will canter up on the ball. Well, Phoenix Park in front with the mouth wide open, led by a long neck on Veteran, and the speed is very muddling. Zar Riz is over racing. He is in third. Two lengths, Kudamuda with his mouth open, and York's off around them. Zar Riz has dashed to the front. Coming down the side at the 750. Zar Riz, he's three wide. Phoenix Park's booting up on the inside to keep him away from the fence. Veteran eases to be third. And they've gone out five lengths, Kudamudu. A length away is Pixel and Reenact last as they come towards the bend. Phoenix Park, 450 out just in front of Zar Riz. They'll turn together. By by two lengths on Veteran, five lengths to Kudamudu, one straightening up. Danny Beasley on the inside, Phoenix Park. York just niggling at Zar Riz, he's almost on terms. Phoenix Park still just in front, now Zar Riz has claimed him. Veteran's a length away and Kudamudu's made up tremendous ground and is running on well. Zar Riz wanting to duck in in front, here's the maiden galloper. Veteran after him, Kudamudu wind him up. Zar Riz in front, no good thing, Kuda's coming with the big ones. Kudamudu after Veteran, picked them up and a great win. Kudamudu went home to beat Veteran. Zar Riz was third, then Phoenix Park reenact and Pixel last in. Well, Brad Stewart could jump on my back against Kingston Town, he'd still win. Gee, he's riding well. Wasn't the best of rides that time, but he still got him home. They took off and he was flat-footed at the 650 with the boom that was on him. He was entitled to probably kick on a little bit better. The overall time is 1.12.21, home 34.93. And Kuda Mudu really back to his best this entire... Sometimes you see small fields where jockeys go out to ride against the horse and not ride a race. Oh, yeah. Time and Happens time Happens all again. the time. Yeah. Alan, hot favourites in small fields. They're, yeah. they're, they're a terrible betting conveyance because, uh, as you say, other jockeys scout for them. They're watching that horse. They're trying to make life difficult for it all the time. They end up bringing their own mount undone in the process and leaving it to something that just buys its time off the pace. But uh, it happens more often than not. So and what about Kudamudu? I mean, he's been... Yeah, Brian. Well right. stood well with Flip-Flop. Racing in the Furious, Flip-Flop was a shade slow to go. Other than that, it was a great line out. Clear advantage pinged out of the gate. Claire's vision away fast. Pick a line settling up with the leaders. Dynamic Love is caught very wide and Night Frolic's rushing around the outside. Donnelly begets money the last one. Night Frolic on the outside had moved up and got a neck in front of Clear Advantage. Wide out moving up now is Dynamic Love. She's three deep the Gold Coast filly. A length away Claire's vision. Lady Milan sneaking up on the fence from Donna Dior. Then Preserve inside of Pick a Line. Unworldly well back with she's purring on her outside they were followed by near the tail money begets money with speciality and flip-flop as they approach the bend 500 meters to go clear advantage the kiwi filly sailing along in front led by a neck on night frolic dynamic love three out she's purring four wide preserve five deep lady milan the fence from claire's vision donna dior and unworldly is now eased to the extreme outside and is running home very strongly they've reached the 300 dynamic loves moved up to clear advantage but unworldly coasted up on the outside and grabbed the a lot of them. They were followed by Donna Dior. Preserve getting home on the fence. Money begets money down the outside. But Unworldly had raced away. Preserve and money begets money left to fight out the miners. But it's Unworldly. She wins it. Second prize. Money begets money from Preserve in a photo. They were followed by Donna Dior. Pick a line. Dynamic love. Clear advantage. Well back. Claire's vision. Flip flop. Then she's purring. Lady Milan didn't come on. Night frolic and speciality last in. Unworldly number four, racing like a horse who will just get better with uh, the step up and distance next time out, swooping on the, on the outside, stretch the neck and race away over the concluding stages. Well, that's the first time Larry Cassidy's been on her back. I bet he was impressed. Four to five, 80 to one, and 10 to one, Shadow. Yep, the kid. I, I was really impressed with her. I was, uh, the last time I saw her race, I thought she was... Um, had something there you know but um the way she coasted up i can see her doing that again and again i think that's the best three-year-old filly i've seen come out this season and uh but she's still learning what it's all about richie you see you just want to move in and hug them inside she's, her larry hasn't even is, was larry cassidy on it yes he hasn't even uh moved on it at this stage and now he shakes her up a bit and she just lengthens stride and 
moves a couple of lengths clear and starts to stargaze at the crowd now. Pricks her ears up and has a good look around and she's uh, she's pretty good. And I think the key to her is just to give her plenty of room and make one run on the Richie because well, she's got gears. They're, uh, they're doing pretty well with her at the moment. Mm. I think John Hawkes is quite realistic uh, about her. He wasn't getting too excited yesterday, but that's his usual he style. He never does, does he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But he did query, you know, the field that she beat yesterday. It wasn't an overly strong race. Yeah. One of them was good too. It was the Ruffy that came home with yeah. money begets money. Yeah, well, it, it was it, 80 to 1. Yeah. So maybe we can read something into yeah. that. All right, Jono, we'll yeah. take... Facing in the Chelmsford, they jumped in a good line. Yippie-I-O went back shortly after the start, and Al Mansour and a line both away very quickly. So Reg with tribute, and the big bowl going Yippie-I-O last as they come down the side. 850 to run, and it's Al Mansour in front by a length on a line. A length away is the Regal and three-quarters Celestial Choir. A length and a half in the race, making ground on the fence. Joss Sticks from Pastor Express. Two lengths, Smith Rander. Inside of the mare, Coco Cabana, six off the lead. Then examine the book's tributes, and Yippie I.O. easing out to start a run. Before the bend, 4.50 out. Al Mansour is travelling beautifully in the lead. Led by a length on the line, two lengths, Celestial Choir. a Regal, Pastor Express, Coco Cabana as they straighten up. 400 metres to go, and Beasley's got a vice-like grip on Al. He's reached the 350, leading two lengths on a line, trying to come back out after him. Two lengths away, Celestial Choir, Pastor Express. Now he draws the persuader on Al Mansour. He's in front. Celestial Choir, the stablemates, running a hell of a race with Pastor Express. They've got to Al Mansour. Pastor Express and Celestial Choir. Pastor Express lunging very tight. Pastor Express has grabbed Celestial Choir right on the line, and there's little between the pair. Al Mansour a battling third from a line. Then came wide out, Yippie I.O. making ground from Joss Sticks and Mithranda. They were followed by Examine the Books, Tributes, Coco Cabana, and last of all, Zerigal. Pastor Express on the outside, lunging. What a performance if he's won first up for Paul Cave. Hadn't raced since being down the track in the Sydney Cup. He's moved up. I just, I just had already... All set. Racing, might and power about the centre of the line away, but he's going back shortly after the kick, showing a lot of early speed as Mr. Innocent. He's going to lead Haunting Spirit, Nazareth Wide going forward. Otis Gay in final was able to cross and gallop to the lead. Led by a length on Nazareth and Mr. Innocent now going to the box seat. One away final fantasy, might and power a touch wide sliding up from Otis Gay on the fence, then L.A. Suez and Fair Way. Well back Lahar, they were followed by Freemason and Chinoy the last one as they come down the side at the 650. Haunting Spirit in front at full flight. Led by a length and a half on Nazareth and Mr. Innocent. Might and power at his first run for nearly two years has had to do a lot of work wide out on the track from Final Fantasy. Otis Gay on the fence, the Australian Derby winner fair way to the outside. He's being tracked up by the Queensland Derby winner Freemason. Haunting Spirit in front and giving a sight at the 300. Led by two lengths on Mr. Innocent under pressure. Otis Gay on the fence. They've now got to Haunting Spirit. They were followed wider out by Nazareth and Final Fantasy. Mr. Innocent in front of Otis Gay. Both boys go for the whip. Otis Gay and Mr. Innocent. Mr. Innocent with race fitness on his side in front. He's going to be too good. Mr. Innocent's just beaten Otis Gay. Freemason flying home got third from Nazareth and Alay Suez. Not far away, haunting spirit. Then came Chinoy, Fairway, Final Fantasy, Laha, and Might and Power after a tough run was last home. Real fight. Five to four on Mr. Innocent. Uh, Glenn Collis for Mel Girard. 11 to one Otis Gay. Terrific run. And 40's Freemason. And the winner has now won 14 from 32. Let's You're just not going to think that. But isn't yeah. the weight an amazing thing? Now, that horse yesterday had to give six kilos away to Otis, uh, to, um, Otis. Otis Gay, yeah. and he was just able to get him down. Yeah. But when they get to the weight for age races, Mr. Yeah. Innocent, you saw him in the 10,000, the Premier, he just sprinted away. But yeah. when he got to the handicap of the Stradbroke, yep. he had to give land siding six kilos. Couldn't, Couldn't do, do it. it. No. He's getting Stop better and better, Mr. Um, yesterday, we <coughs> saw the return to racing of might and power. And, uh, John, you were there. Uh, it was very much an anticlimax. Yeah, it was, Graham. Uh, you're talking about a 1,350-metre sprint for a horse who was a Caulfield and Melbourne Cup winner. Uh, he jumped and really wanted to run. I think he shocked everybody the way he got up there amongst them in mm. the early part. He was never better than three and four deep. Coming around the turn, he got a stitch, and he said, that'll do me, thank you. I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks. I believe it's as simple as that. 
Now our producer, Mike... Uh, um, I, I even think Connections would, and I, I read in the paper that Nick Morata said he was disappointed that the horse ran last. But um, having said that, to, for me, he's got to make massive improvement at his next run. If he repeats that performance, I think they'll be looking long and hard at him. Um, he's got a... He Right in Adelaide. Now, have a look how short this is. Vanderbite, oh, 25 to 1 on. 45, the rider of the Perth stable mate, Fairway, who won the series, the three legs of the crown last year. The light is on. Dandify runs the short price favourite at $1.40, racing in the gloaming. Dandify a shade slow to go with Ree Rinker after the start, and Viper Corp won the break. Danishenka began well, gave bet on the fence as the rail very shortly as Reed Renker improves around them quickly from Fantastic. And a length away, last of all, is Free Ranger. 600 metres to go in the gloaming. And the front runner is still Viper Corp by three quarters, Eden Rock. Danishenka three wide. Reed Renker four wide. Go Bent hugs the fence. A length away is Suntastic. Dandify on the improving Free Ranger on her wheel as they turn the bend. In the straight, Viper Corp the leader. Danishenka after it. Then came Eden Rock on the inside of runners from Reed Renker and Dandify bustling into the clear. She had a bit of a bump with Suntastic and then Free Ranger. Viper Corp in front. Go Bent on the fence. Coming at them as Danishenka and now Dandify is hitting top gear. Dandify after Go Bent. Go Bent, Viper Corp, Danishenka and Dandify. Go Bent on the fence and Dandify. Go Bent. Go Bent in a major upset. Won the gloaming from either Dandify, Danishenka and Viper Corp. Then Free Ranger. They were followed by Thuntastic, Re Renka and Eden Rock was last in. Go Bent for Digger McClellan. Probably the second biggest win of his riding career. Flavor coming up. Always an exciting race. Flavor, a very difficult race. Always an exciting race. Flavor, a very difficult race to win. One of the toughest sprints for the three-year-olds as it comes so early in their careers. And uh, the favourite today. A good line for the Ascot Vale and they're away. Scenic Warrior and Shower Heart bumped at the start. They're both coming grandstand. So gorgeous away very fast out there with sorted out paradiddle Lord Dane. St. Petersburg gorgeous out their side in front. So gorgeous leading. Out there with it too is Lord Dane and also travelling OK early. Sorted out. Paradiddle is just off them and Shower Heart has the outside rail. St. Petersburg has to come closest to the middle of the track on this side. Well back in the field is Scenic Warrior against the rail in company with Niabnik. And uh, over on the flat side, Slipstream has raced to the lead and Slipstream has the flat side covered on the grandstand. It's still the filly so gorgeous in front of St. Petersburg. Shower Heart and Sorted Out who's trying hard. It's the grandstand well in front and the filly so gorgeous is more than two leagues clear 100 metres to go from Sorted Out and Shower Heart and then St. Petersburg but so gorgeous joins some great fillies in winning this race so gorgeous all the way from Shower Heart photo third either Sorted Out or St. Petersburg from Paradiddle and then came Slipstream first home on the flat side in behind them were Niabnik and then Scenic Warrior never in it Lord Dane and then Greg you mentioned Dan O'Sullivan there with the approximate 3 one ten, I believe Dan O'Sullivan and Bias Bay away quickly near the fence. The mayor proud that was in the stride fast. She sits up second. Josh sticks away quickly going forward. Coco Cabana on the fence and Pastor Express wide out traveling up. They were followed by Strange. Then came Abel Master looking to slot in. He's very wide and Yippie IO is going around the Fear Express and Yippie IO going forward traveling up to be third. Bias Bay momentarily off the bit given a slap down the side. Then came Pravda and she is poised to pounce right behind the leaders. A length away Coco Cabana and then came Beatman off the fence on Pat for Charlie. He tried to trail up uh, Pravda but she got away from him. Then Tribute Strange and Abel Master as they flatten for home. Pastor Express Josh Six taken on by Yippie IO. Pravda four out, Pat for Charlie, five out. Coco Cabana and Bias Bay can't get a run and Tribute makes ground the fence. It's Pravda at the 150 metres mark moving up to Pastor Express. Pravda, Pastor Express and Tribute from Pat for Charlie. Pastor Express in front pulling out all stop 25 to go and he's too good. It's Pastor Express from Pravda and Pat for Charlie. Then came Tribute, that was a great run by the Mayor. Then Bias Bay, Josh Six, Yippie IO, Coco Cabana, Rabel Master and Strange last in. Two runs back, 1,600, in fact, 1,500 metres and 1,900 metres, and he's won both two Group 2s in the Chelmsford Stakes and now the running of the Hill Stakes. And he really is a good little horse, this bloke. Admittedly, not the best Hill Stakes we've ever seen, but you can do no more than... Second leg of the crown. It's a four-series crown, in fact, with uh, 
all four race series for the Phillies. This is the second leg of the crown. They're racing. Flip flop and unworldly as Shade Slay to go. Dynamic Love away quickly, and Donna Dior was out of the gates very quickly. Going fast is Tyson Fight, then Preserve settling fourth. The stable made unworldly fifth defence. Alan Ryder slows down the tempo. Coming up to the 850, Dynamic Love three quarters on Tyson Fight. Preserves out three wide. Donna Dior on the fence, and unworldly is trotting behind them. Two lengths, she's a pretender. Flip flop, Lady Milan going forward. Then she's purring, and last of all is Casino Fling before the bend at the 600. The leader is Dynamic Love, three quarters Tyson's bite and preserve out after the pair. Donna Dior on the fence, unworldly about to come out. She's three to four lengths off the lead. Around her as they turn, she's a pretender. Cassidy brings her to the outside now, the favourite. And Flip Flop heads the others. Dynamic Love booted at the 300, led by two lengths. Unworldly is now pulled to the outside and giving chase. The leader's got away. Then Donna Dior. It's Dynamic Love two in front. Unworldly slowly but surely winding up, but Dynamic Love still in front. Unworldly is knuckling down. She's coming home the better. She's going to be too good, Unworldly. Grabs the other one and wins it. Unworldly has won it, and in the end, a pretty soft win. Dynamic Love was second, five away third, Lady Milan from Preserve. Donna Dior flip-flop, then came She's Perry. Looked a bit of a worry just for a little while in the home straight, but the last hundred metres, Larry Cassidy just gave her a dig in the ribs, and she picked up. She found that extra gear, and she's raced on to win, and in the end, fairly comfortably. And they finished a long way in front of the others. At the 250, I thought, gee, ooh, maybe you've, you've given away a bit too much start. The other one got away, Dynamic Love. But then with 100 to go, Cassidy just kicked her in the ribs, and she just found another gear, the sign of a very good filly. And she's raced home. They've come home 34 steps. And as one racing fairway break fast out wide but is going back Chinoy and Celestial Choir away very quickly showing plenty of early speed in the early stages is Pride Rock and Fairway's now burning up it's Pride Rock in front of Fairway and Al Mansour settling on the fence from Celestial Choir Road Escape front they went hard in the early stages and at the thousand Pride Rock one length in front of the Australian Derby went up Fairway a length and a half Celestial Choir Al Mansour in that group are Ears Ronnie Final Fantasy LA Suez Might and Power and last of all is Freemason, 6.50 out. And Pride Rock is under siege from Fairway and Celestial Choir. Two lengths to Otis Gay, and he's had a glorious run on the fence at Al Mansour's on his outside. Two lengths further back is Varakul and Shaverni from Lahar Chinoy. Then came Lease. Final Fantasy and Might and Power and Freemason are well back. L.A. Suez in front of that pair. In the straight, Fairway and Pride Rock together. But Al Mansour has cantered up on the outside to grab them from Celestial Choir. Otis Gay needing a run. Varakul Chinoy starting to run on. Al Mansour under the bat but he drew clear. Let a link. Trying hard. Celestial Choir with Chinoy but Al Mansour in front. Chinoy trying hard. Al Mansour stopping Chinoy diving. Al Mansour in front and one at a whisker. Al Mansour from Chinoy. Photo third. Barakul Ale Suez and Celestial Choir. Fairway was next. Then Pride Rock. Otis Gay. They were followed by Ears Ronnie. Freemason wide out. Then Shaverni. Final Fantasy. Least Might and Power and Laha about 50 to go. Chinoy on the outside starting to drive and they hit the line. Al Mansour will hang on and win it by about a note. Next event is Newcastle 7. Epitome 2, number 1, 2, Reanax. 3, Phoenix Park, 4, Outgate. 1, Epitome 2 is at $2.20. Reanax 820, the Spring Stakes this is. Phoenix Park at 10, Outgate. The running of the race. 13 Group 1 contenders have come out of this race. That Love Lawn to be ridden more forward today, the stable mate of Outgate. She had no luck here last time out, although... Good all the way from Timpala player in Phoenix Park, back on the fence. Kudamudu poised fourth. Going up Love Lawn, then came on the rail, Brockade, Outgate and reenact on the improved going around the outside. Two links, Charo style, Universal Prince, third last defence. Then Chief's Deputy, and that's Kenny. Whip them in as heads turn for home in the spring stakes and pick a lean first for the judge. Led by a long neck on Tim Parler, player and Kuda Mudu now letting down. Phoenix Park on the fence, two links to Outgate, Love Lawn and Universal Prince are starting to flatten out and hit top gear. Phoenix Park took the inside run from Pickalene and Kudamudu. Then Universal Prince coming hard. Phoenix Park in front. Universal Prince is absolutely flying. Phoenix Park in front. Universal Prince grabbing him. Yes! Got the 
here on the line. Universal Prince on the line, I think, from Phoenix Park in a photo. Nothing in it. Third prize, either pick a lean or back to the fence, out gate. Timpala player, Kutamutu, reenact. Then love on first glimpses from the broadcast box. I thought he got there. It's Phoenix Park in front. Universal Prince and Lenny Beasley starting to pick up Danny Beasley in Phoenix Park. It's the Battle of the Beasleys. And Universal Prince that Lenny has had in recent times continues to go from strength to strength. The cup. Let's check that out. Check that out. The first of the six stage places straight. 460 so gorgeous. 420 is it in this money. Uh, 15 Vlad, 18 at for the star filly of day one of two year old racing. 890 for me coming. And they really need really hard to hold out down the lead. They don't seem to be trying in the race to hit it. So gorgeous. Of the 600, so gorgeous, the leader of that length in front of Stormy Summers, who's working hard out three or four wide. Up there, too, as they came to the turn, is misunderstood, and Armin Ruby, who's settling for the lead. Charming is in behind them, which affects a little of this Marty and Sheldon Lads as they neared the corner, then dashing Granada, and Knights of Promise as they swing around behind Sir Love Dust is third last. So gorgeous, the leader from Armin Ruby, misunderstood in the centre. Charming under the whip behind them, followed by dashing Granada, Stormy Summers is battling only. Pot on fly down the outside, but so gorgeous at the 100 has a good lead. Pot on fly rattling home on the outside, and then charming. So gorgeous getting tied. She's the leader, though, and so gorgeous gets home with it a half length. The pot on flyer, either all time high or charming for third. Then came on the run, Vlad dashing Granada. Just behind them is misunderstood, who drops out. There's his next to last, and absolute was loved up. Well, on flyer. Number 14, all-time high finishing in third position. Big race, Bella Hart, off Greg Miles. Yeah, it's a terrific field here, Brendan. Only about four or five to come in. Been a bit sorted out. A fair way back as Phoenix Warrior and the Grey Cardinals last of all as they came up the side near the 600. It's St. Petersburg just in front. Further after working, got up the second. A length and a half, Rapid Man, Shower Hart, he's outside, paradiddle the rail. One Shrewdy back about six or seven from Debris, Cat and Oz to row. They were followed by Slipstream round the outside from our wing foot as they corner and then Phoenix Warrior. Hands back behind those shot of thunder. In the straight now, St. Petersburg tackled by Shrew Boo. Show a heart the outside and then Rapid Man from Paradiddle and Shrewdy down the outside. Debris is getting into the clear. Shrew Boo, the leader. Show a heart coming after it. Shrew Boo about three quarters. He's fighting well from Show a heart. Shrew Boo clear and Shrew Boo beats Show a heart three quarters. Got up and grabbed third. Then Rapid Man and Paradiddle from our wing foot did well in the circumstances. Shot of Thunder next and then came Shrewdy. Back behind those was sorted out the great Cardinal home wrecker. Uh, Slipstream and Phoenix Warriors. St. Petersburg not right up to finish at the tail of the field. And behind him was Patanon. 189. New South Wales 4,786. Queensland 7,130. Over 10. 580 Yamlon. Slavonic 40, Camarina 59, Ruthless Tycoon at 16, Chattanooga 780, the main one's Vetti there 12, 14 for Sudurka, and we go down uh, one more page, and you'll find to beat the fade, not running on garage, Weasel Will, go with the flow's good value, $29, Porter Rocker at $30, they were talking around 10 to 1 in early markets this morning. Uh, Pat Dooney Valley was super, he was the run of the night, prior to that, he won brilliantly here at Caulfield, so he's a horse on the way up with 52 and a half kilos, He's just got to fit in, tuck in somewhere from barrier 19. Stephen King, group one winning jockey. He's got the job ahead of him now, but I'm sure. This is the rocker. The top weight and favourite going into the lineup. Not they're off. And a lovely start. And one of the first out was Porter Rocker and Dum Rum. Weasel Will and Dover got away well. Chester Rossa just okay, but he's easing to about midfield now. Ruthless Tycoon, Camarina and Rancho Spark are going quickly. As they settle, being followed then by Zai Hero and on the rails just behind them, Porter Rocker, one acre, Bilka, then Chester Rossa. Around him then came over and they're trailed by Delirious Vetti there. Second last, Chattanooga and Joe with the flow. 700 to go. Rancho Spark the inside and Ruthless Tycoon lead by a length and a half. Weasel Will third from Camarina, just behind the Mum Rum having a good run with Sadurk at the rail. Then came Honourable Mention on the outside there is Slavonic, followed by Zai Hero. Porter Rocker held up before the turn. Chester Ross are easing to the outside with over and then came Hacker Built, followed by Vetti Veer as they swing the corner where Weasel Will hit the front at the top of the straight over Rancho Spark. Amram trying to get into the clear. Camarina and Porter Rocker are next. Here comes Chester Rossa and Dover's coming down the outside. Big Chester is coming with Porter Rocker to get the Weasel Will. Porter Rocker getting to the front. Chester Rossa coming at him. And uh, 
Camarina's in the middle. Kester Rossa in a three-way go. It's either Kester Rossa or Camarina. Heads up and down a bobbing finish and Porter Rocket close up on the inside. Over did his best work late. Followed by Ackerbilt. Weasel Will held on very well. Umrum just behind them. Followed then by Delirious Rancho Spark and Zai Hero from Saberka. Honourable mention. Go with the flow. And behind these are Chattanooga, Slavonic Betty Bear and Ruthless Tycoon. Judge calls for the photo. It's between Chester Rossa and Camarina. Judge needs the photo to decide it. Come up. Chester Rossa has won it. Number one. There's nothing like seeing a great horse win a tight struggle like that. Second to number one. Thank you. Yeah, just, uh, you know, just goes the courage of the horse. He's, um, I thought he got...
47. The new race record. The course record set by Vaux Road and equaled by Waikika Mooka at 147.3. They've run one feet too good on the day today in the third place. Philip Drake, 378.50. Running double pay, 56.40. Daily double today. Two lengths ahead of Tie the Knot, Georgie Boy and Stan Zay. Now the four market. Tie the Knot, 7.20. Fum and Marshall standing by with Brett Preble. Well, how's Big B? Yep, well, the birthday boy, Brendan, Brady Preble, of course, birthday today, turning 23. The away Stan Zakes, a very strong tip of the race. Lance Siding got out to good odds, but he's come back in now to $6.20. The racing, pace invader, Lance Siding, Sorrento and Hoarding Spirit, and Stan Zake all away quickly with Value Weight as Hoarding Spirit leads from Value Weight. Pace, pace invader the grey in front by a length and a half the stable mate Stan Zake hoarding spirit on the fence at the 800 two lengths to value weight beautifully poised Georgie Boy the fence align the green colours outside of that pair they were followed by juggling time land siding as well one from the fence make it two out a length and a half further back is huge demand they were followed by Nazareth Sorrento final fantasy tie the knots a long way back with Heather and Mithranda around the bend 400 metres to go pace invader in front of Stan Zake on the fence is Hoarding Spirit, value weight into the clear. Georgie Boy looks to angle out and land siding is ripping down the centre of the track with a great run. Tie the knot further, four lengths to stir, but running on well. Land siding claimed the front at the 150 from value weight pace invader. Georgie Boy tie the knot rattling home with it's all over, but land siding clear. Kept going by, kept going by Chrissy Munch and he wins it from tie the knot and or value weight. Then came Georgie Boy juggling time aligned, Sorrento a great run. Then Heather Haunting Spirit. They were followed behind those on the fence by Pace Invader, Stan Zake, Meth Randa. They were followed well back by Huge Demand. I think Bill Ritchie handicap. I'll bet when the uh, barrier is the group one from Randwick and it's the George Main. And the ratings, Mr. Innocent from Al Mansour, Shogun Lodge and Fairway 2, 1, 6 and 5. Now the market, Al Mansour, $21, $4.40 for our Mr. Innocent. Adam, $9, $28, Celestial Choir. Fairways 510, 230 for Shogun Lodge, 27 Otis Gay, Padfoot Charlie 18 on track for the Epsom 27. But I, Shogun Lodge has always been one of my horses. Your trifecta selections here. Data has a look down the line. They balance up, they're racing in the George Main away quickly, Mr. Innocent. Adam on his inside away very fast. Fairway began well and Al Mansour going up to be third. They were followed by Otis Kid, Shogun Lodge back, second last defence and two lengths to pad for Charlie. Coming off the back, swinging down the side, Adam in front. Bastillion led by a length on the inform, Al Mansour and Mr. Innocent back the fence. Three quarters fairway, he's in the clear. One away Otis Gay and a half Celestial Choir. Shogun Lodge back inside Bulkhead and still two lengths away, Pad for Charlie. A good eight lengths first to last at the 700. Adam in front and again starting to up the tempo. Led a length and a half on Al Mansour right at his wheel. One and a half back the fence is Mr. Innocent. Fairway being nickled at by Beatman to go forward. Two lengths Celestial Choir around Otis Gay. Back on the fence, Shogun Lodge from Bulkhead and two last of all is Pad for Charlie. Adam in front and giving them something to catch at the 350 on straightening. He led the way by a length on Al Mansour and Beasley riding confidently. Back to the fence, Mr. Innocent under pressure from Fairway way and now Shogun Lodge bullocking into the clear and then Celestial Choir but it's Adam in front. Mr. Innocent driving hard the fence. Mr. Innocent coming at Adam. Adam in front. Mr. Innocent trying to pick up Adam. Adam with all guts and blood to the line. Too good and he wins the George Main. Adam's won it from Mr. Innocent. Third a photo. Celestial Choir or Al Mansour and Shogun Lodge. They were followed by Padford Charlie. Fair way a flop. Well back Otis Gay and Bulkhead last in. Well, they handed it to Justin Sheehan. He went to the front, good tempo early, put the brakes on, then he was off at the 600. And second and third. Shogun Lodge, I don't know what to make of him. I just don't know what to make of him. Fairway has seemingly lost all form. He was gone at the 600. Uh, Beedman was niggling at him to go forward, but there was no fair way. Eric Farm, Calm Smitzer, race ahead of Keeper, Little Dozer, and Senate Pete. 760 Little Dozer, 340 Senate Pete. 30 running on keepers at 460 Polish Echo 16 Lad starts and trail 24 21 dare to win 13 make me a miracle John Hawk this year no we got the Sandan how can you uh, fathom his chance really bother him good run last start at Sandan how can you uh, fathom his chance really bother him I mean he handled he handled Sandan pretty good and I mean yep. Carp Smites have again okay on the inside Polish Echo got away well so did Keeper in the middle of the line 
and also out wide a dare to win is on the improve as they settle down hit the roof not too far away from them set it pete dropped out to last and make me a miracle is next second running third is happy morning keeper has the run of the race fourth the outside then stars and trail feeling out wider followed by calm smiter Polish Echo next from home wrecker a couple of links to Little Dozer running on is pulled to the outside to do just that as they went by the school make me a miracles back near the tail with Senate Pete Little Dozer exalted lad had dropped out to last keeper and hit the roof of being joined by stars and trail as they came to the turn then happy morning round the outside comes home wrecker and Polish Echo working home fairly well calm smites are battling only as they swing the corner it's keeper the middle and stars and trail from hit the roof and then happy morning and home wrecker well in the straight keeper and Sarson Trail. Sarson Trail and Keeper with Sarson Trail going home a shade the better and Sarson Trail came away to beat Keeper by a length. Photo for third, make me a miracle very wide out and hit the roof. Just between those then was Happy Morning and they were well clear of Calf Smites of Polish Echo and Homebreaker. Then came running on Senate Pete well back and uh, here's the approximates anyway folks. Number 11, Sarson's Trail. $20.60, $5.20 to place. Keeper, number five, $1.90. From the up-and-comer flush, and then beat the fade and Umaline. One, 12, nine, and 10. And the Camarina's uh, 280. No surprise after being beaten a nose in a group one at her last start. St. Clemens fell 860. Pula one to 32, Christening Stable 610. Umaline, $8.00 and flush nine dollars watching her trot's ability but this is her toughest task to date as we're just watching Nova Corp is trying to get a uh, result what's wrong Graham? here we go he trains the horse won two recent races and apparently he's racing now Camarina was one of the first out beat the fade in St Clementsville both got began fast down on the inside and Citronella's just off them early as they go through the first 200 meter Beat the fade with a good trail line. This was Bentley and Flush last as they came up the side. St. Clemens Bell's lead has been whittled away. She's only about a half to a neck in front now to Camarina. Crystal Hero's been working all the while. She's out three deep. A length and a half. Citronella beat the fade. And Hula Wonder working into it on the outside. Clear of Mrs. Bentley, Queen of the Desert. Umaline last on the inside with Flush as they neared the corner. And St. Clemens Bell tackled by Camarina, who looked to be coasting at the turn. In third placing, wide out Hula Wonder and beat the fade, starting to run on fairly. Camarina, boss has gone for home now. It's Camarina with Hula Wonder throwing down a big threat and Mrs. Bentley running on. Camarina has a job on her hands here. She's a half in front. Hula Wonder's trying hard. Camarina's ahead in front. Hula Wonder's levelling up on the outside and Hula Wonder got up and beat Camarina by a nose to a half head on the line. Three lengths away third, either Mrs. Bentley or Flush, who came from last. And they're followed by... Umaline, Cristalero, Queen of the Desert, St. Clemens Bell tiring badly, and towards the end of Citronella. Winston Stewart's report went blocked for a run behind Fuss at Caulfield. Billy's and Mayor's company, 3 1 and 5. Now, Dur 1400 metres, 8 8 runs the favourites. They're away in the stand, Fox. Dynamic Love was away very quickly. So too National Saint and Mower Man on the fence. 8 8 began fast. She's moving up to be fourth, fifth as I'll get by. Two left Empire and Sale of Century. Over the crossing at the 800 metres mark and National Saint running along. Led by over a length on 8 eight. A length away is Moa Man getting a glorious trail on the fence and Dynamic Love is poised to pounce fourth. Two lengths I'll get by, then Glen Rowan going forward. Two away in the field is Kuda Mudu from Marauder, Sale of Century and Vampire the last one. On the bend, 500 metres to go. National Saint giving a sight. Led three quarters on 8 eights, about to be popped the question. Two lengths Dynamic Reason. Moa Man the fence a run there if he's good enough from I'll get by Glen Rowan. And Marauder to the outside from Kuta Muda. It's the Phillies. 8 eights and Dynamic Love on the outside. Dynamic Love moved up. Moa Man's getting the inside run. Collis is confident. He hasn't gone for the bat yet in the Gold Coast. Philly went away at the 100 mark. Dynamic Love two links on 8 eights. Sale of Century the fence, but Dynamic Love, gee, she's consistent. And she's too good again. Dynamic Love's won it from Sale of Century and 8 eights. Then Kuta Muda. I'll get by just behind those from Moa Man. Further back, National Saint Vampire, Glen Rowan, Marauder, last home. Dynamic Love, 380 and $1.50 in the business. Johnny Wallace from the Gold Coast and ridden by Glen Spike Collis. Sale of the Century from the back has followed the rail home, Rod Quinn, John Hawks. Certainly a black book run from him. And 8 eights trying her little heart out on the straight. Gary Lunn and... Looked a great line. 
racing in the spring champion stakes. Phoenix Park away well. Get only the fence and Ocean began quickly. Gay Bent was going up. He's four out and they're four abreast on that bend. Coming across from wide out as falls the shadow. Reenact booting up on the inside of him. Two links Helsenborg. Curata Storm inside Helsenborg. Well back is Ray Renker and Universal Prince going up on his outside, whipping them in. Off the back and coming down the side of the track. And the front runner is Ghetto. Three quarters on Phoenix Park and Go Bent is getting a beautiful run. The Gloaming Stakes winner. Three quarters Ocean, back the fence, re-enact and three quarters falls the shadow, the Dulcify winner. Curata Storm inside of Helsenborg. Universal Prince is still well back. He's on the outside of Ray Renker. By the 800 metres mark, they come in the spring champion stakes and it's Ghetto in front. But Phoenix Park has got within a long neck and a length and a half to go bent. Ocean the outside falls the shadow off around them. Three wide reenact on the fence needing galloping room. Helsenborg comes up behind falls the shadow. Curata storm the fence. Universal Prince will be saved for one final bid and he's starting his run and re-rent last as they head for home. In the home straight and Phoenix Park moved up on the outside of Ghetto. Ocean made a line of three. Go bent on the fence and falls the shadow letting down with a good run. Universal Prince starting to wind up and he's coming now from Reenact. It's Phoenix Park just in front of Ghetto. On the fence, Go Bent and Universal Prince is starting to charge. Here's Universal Prince at the 75. He hit the lead from Falls the Shadow and Go Bent and Universal Prince takes the champion stakes. He's too good for them. Universal Prince from Falls the Shadow and or Go Bent. Close up Ghetto from Phoenix Park. Reenact. Then came Ocean. Re Rinker will back Curata Storm and Helsenborg last in. Well done in the Epsom Handicap and he's all class the little cult. He really has great acceleration. He was a long way back from them. But when it privately has always said that this horse had the ability to go onto the elite level and he was 100% right. Gates are open. They're racing. Freemason went back after the start with Yippie IO near the inside. Special orders away quickly. Able Master commenced fast and is rushing up looking to take on the leader. Pravda will drop in third from Citrus Prince. Action about to hot up at the 650 mark. The leader special orders narrowly by a neck on Able Master. Two lengths away, Pravda about to ease out the starter run from Citrus Prince. Yippie IO behind those. Freemason coming around Prophet's Kiss as they balance up for home. 400 out and special orders running a great race just in front of Able Master. Now Munster gives the mare a bit more leather and Pravda's moved up on the outside to tackle the two leaders. Then Citrus Prince and Yippie IO running on well from Freemason. He had to pull the stick, but Pravda's hit the lead. Special Orders is fighting back gamely. Yippie IO coming the outside. Pravda in front. Yippie starting to draw level. The big boy. Yippie's hit the lead. Yippie IO, and he's got up to win it. A winner of the race three years ago. Runner up two years ago, and he's made it another one. He's won the Queen's Plate from either Pravda, Freemason, or Special Orders. He ran a great race from Prophet's Kiss. They were followed behind those by Abel Master and last in Citrus Prince. And Jimmy Cassidy aboard his old buddy, and he absolutely relished that victory. Yippee, I'm out and he's won the race this year. Jimmy Cassidy, of course, won the Queensland Derby aboard this horse. Yippee, I.O. stated that he was one of the best stayers potentially in the land. Uh, he went to Melbourne. He lost the form with that virus. But uh, Alan Denham's done a great job with Yippee, I.O. winning the Queen's Cup. And she runs the favourite. Gates open. Curvaceous Lady Milan and Flip Flop all slow to go. And Actress flew out of the gate. She went straight to the front. Piccolina is rushing across from wide out from Sophisticat. Preserve going fence. Donna Dior two lengths. Sophisticat. Curvaceous on the rail. And Worldly's got back to third last. Spotting the leader six lengths. Two lengths. Lady Mulan. And last of all is Flip Flop as they come down the side at the 850. It's Actress in front leading the way. Actress by a half length on Pick a Lean. On the inside, Donna Dior third. Preserve close up fourth. Two lengths, Sophisticat around Curvaceous. Unworldly is back third last. Six or seven lengths from the leaders. She's about to ease wide now as Cassidy starts to go forward. Back on the fence, Flip Flop. And Lady Milan last. He's niggling at Unworldly. She's still a fair way back as they approach the bend at the 500. It's Actress in front leading the way. Three quarters on Pick a Lean. Back on the fence, Donna Dior from Preserve. Then came Curvaceous, Unworldly easing out, Lady Moulin outside of her. In the home straight in the flight stakes, actress the leader. Pick a line on the outside, trying to get on terms.
is unworldly starting to wind up. Lady Mulan's coming with her. Donna Dior and Preserve heads the others. But Sydney's Glamour Philly. Unworldly had moved up and she had raced to Picoline. Unworldly in front of Picoline. Lady Mulan wide out with actress Donna Dior. But Unworldly's going to be too good. Unworldly comes right on and wins the flight stakes. Unworldly first. Picoline second. Lady Mulan, I think, third in front of actress. And back to the fence, Donna Dior. Then Preserve. They were followed by Curvaceous, Flip Flop. And last of all would have been Sophisticat. Good staying effort by Unworldly, ridden by Larry Cassidy. Little Picoline fought doggedly, but she was unlucky, or very unlucky at least, to say that she should have been unbeaten in six starts today. She's won five, five of those, and uh, she was a good thing. She will now head off to Victoria to the rich springtime spoils to be had down south. They made a good line. Starter picked up the button. Racing in the Epsom. Chinoy and Crawl slow to get going. Haunting Spirit, Adam Aligned. Land siding away fast. Georgie Boy, Valuate going quickly. Otis Gay not far away. Mulan Princess caught wide, rushing up past centre field. They were followed by one. Haunting Spirit clapping on a fast tempo at the thousand. Led two lengths on value weight, a length and a half to Georgie Boy, aligned the fence. They were followed by Adam uh, pushing through in the centre. So Mulan Princess is effectively three wide, a length and a half to land siding. Celestial Choir, they were followed by Otis Gay. Then Sorrento, outside of L.A. Suez on the fence. Chinoy the centre from spying. Shogun Lodge back the fence from higher. He's a long way back with Pace Invader. Two lengths further back on the rail is Referral. Tie the knot being stoked up. Then came Crawl in Final Fantasy, the last one. Before the bend at the 500 metres mark in the Epsom, Hoarding Spirit has ensured a fast tempo. Leading by a half length on Georgie Boy. A line's getting a run up on the fence from Value 8. Adam to the outside. Land siding behind those. Tie the knot's a mile back in the field and High is badly strung up in traffic at the 250. Hoarding Spirit in front but Land siding sailing throughs after him very quickly. Show Gun Lodge roaring through on the fence. LA Suez needs to run Adam down the centre. Shogun Lodge and Bossy had raced to the front. Land Siding tries to match Shogun Lodge, but it's his day today. Shogun Lodge wins the group one. Second is Land Siding. Chinoya Photo third. Crawl screaming home. Adam wide out on the track. Then a line tie the knot. High and no luck from Sorrento. Well back Hoarding Spirit. They were followed by Referral. Celestial Choir, Milan Princess, Otis Gay, Value Weight Spying. Then came Pace Invader, Final Fantasy, and Georgie Boy last time in the Epsom Handicap. And Glenn Boss, do you reckon he's happy? Having won the derby here last season on Sky Heights at Group 1 level, and Glenn Boss, after being back from Hong Kong, only for a relatively short period of time, has ridden the race of his life. events it's the concept sports stakes due in 13 minutes the second look at the tote core two hour with crystal finale 12 11 my gold brother mr gold flyer 11 scalato 15 flying edge 620 a very interesting race coming involved in this race the likes of scalato who's unbeaten flying ed who's been very good in his two tuple run who's unbeaten and big pat across the great cardinal and lands end rushing and they're away good start soon right Another one trapped out as Shrewdy, about seventh, and they're followed by Sinchona. A length and a half further back then came Sound the Alarm getting up on the inside, followed by Flying Ed, and then Scalato, Tuple Run, Criace, and Big Pat as last as they swept by the 600 metres. Land's End on the outside and Surfboard. They've gone out a pretty good clip, these two, and they lead from Mr Goldflyer. Crystal Finale's been three deep the whole way. In behind them, our wings foot, and they're followed by Warabinda searching for an out as they come round the turn. Easing to the outside, Crystal Finale, and then Scalato out very wide as they go to the 300 metres. Land's End on the outside, still with his head in front, but our winged foot is coming home well. Wider out, Crystal Finale. Warabinda's just battling along at the moment. Scalato's finishing well. Land's End at the 120, leads by over two lengths here from the Crystal Finale, and Scalato coming home on the outside, but Land's End finds some form. Land's End wins at a length and a quarter. Scalato, third crystal finale. Big Pat from last, scorching up on the rails. Then Mr. Goldflyer, our wing foot, Warabinda back. Land's End, defeating Scalato, crystal finale. $260 for Cornella, $6,765 being the... Yesterday, but uh, your horse, Scalato, was a good run. Uh, yeah, it was, actually. Uh, I think Clary had, had, had said... Clary Connors? Yes, he said he'd missed a race with him. He'd won, he's only had two starts for two wins. Um, he's heading towards the derby. Mm. Um, Are you still on him? 
Well, <laughs> eight Sunline. Oh, a dollar seventy. Twelve Hill of Grace. Eleven Carp Sad Way, and three Oliver Twist are the ratings. Here's the tote call, and it shows that streak 32 44 second coming oliver twist 850 15 fairway dire tribe 14 pens joy 17 dollars 40 for prince Sir lucas sunline a dollar 70. we've got uh, celestial show 49 82 blue murder carpstad way 15 11 hill of grace Bowl well, were certainly the ones that uh, have been back to to upset the other Kiwi Sunline. The uh, Kiwis have got the, the top three. Also, Fairway here. Just noticed uh, in the last call coming through what's happening on track, Fairway has tightened up. Uh, yeah. She's uh, the dominant favourite at $1.50 on Super Tab at the moment. Chances given to beat her. There has been a bit of money for Fairway today. He might just test her in front. But she's a dominant to top pick Sunline. Fairway away. Sunline jumped well. Soon after the jump, it was Fairway immediately looking for the front. Away quickly as Celestial Show. Carpstead Way. Sunline on the improved wider out. Prince Aluka holding a place on the inside. Blicker holding a place on the inside. Blue Murder and Die Tribe aren't far off the pace. But Fairway sets it early. Sunline moving up into second, placing a length and a half away. Celestial's Joy. As they went down the back of the course, and the leader is Fairway, three quarters clear. Sunline second, two and a half lengths away in third place in Carpstead Way on the rails as they went by the thousand metre mark. Uh, they were being followed by Celestial Show and then Diatribe Defence, a half length to Blue Murder. Two Prince of Lucas streak, and they're followed by Hill of Grace and Sarwatch together. A length and a half, Ken's Joy back there with Bulkhead and second coming. Up nearing the turn, Fairway's lead only a neck to the Great Mare's Sunline, inching a little closer. A length and a half, Carpstead Way, who's had the drop on these two all the way. Then came Diatribe on the rail. Peeling out wider then was Blue Murder as they corner. And then came Celestial Show Streak. And back behind them is Sarwatch and Hill of Grace. Well on the straight, they come to the middle of the track. And Sunline threw it down and went up to Fairway. He's got a kick on the inside at Sunline, narrowly in front of Fairway. About three lengths in front of Diatribe. And then Carpstead Way from Ken's Joy. Sunline's got a fight on her hands here at the 200. Fairway's really kicking well. And Diatribe is starting to lift. It's Fairway and Sunline. Hammer and Tong. Fairway the inside side and Sunline they're coming down and a nose and nose go and Fairway Fairway kicked and beat Sunline a short half head diatribe third then Ken's Joy followed further back by Bulkhead and then back behind those to finish in the race was Streak and uh, then Hill of Grace followed by Carpstead Way a gap celestial show second coming Prince of Luca towards the end from Blue Murder and Sarwatch what a race you go a long long way to witness a race like that these two great horses ran one two the entire trip <laughs> the winners paid twelve dollars odd the quinella 640 and the trifecta three hundred and nine dollars on super Taran planned everything before the race we went out there and we just couldn't let the mare trot and can so whether we led or whether we didn't we uh, like i said we've had the same We've been through the Sunline things with might and power. Like, I'm quite sure she'll bounce back, but yeah. um, it's no disgrace. Like, our bloke's a good horse, and, you know, good luck to Sunline, and okay. good luck to us. All right, now, your Caulfield Cup, is the Cox Plate an option, too, with Fairway? My dad has all the say, but I couldn't imagine him backing him up in a week. Okay, so you'll run. Well, that's uh, his 10th from 21. His stake earnings now go to 2.4 million. Winning margin was half ahead. Terrific run, Diatribe. Terrific run, Ken's Joy. You know, that mare didn't fancy it one bit, did she, when she couldn't get away from you? No, she, she, she really... Um, I made a bit of a staying test on the 600 metres, just went a nice speed uh, out in front for the condition of my horse to suit, mm. to, to suit him. But when I really put it to her, she had me beat three times down the straight. Mm. Um, but she just kept fighting and fighting, and my bloke... Um, she, Sunline come in on top of him um, uh, over the last 200 metres and it really made him sort of get down and fight even more. Mm. Down um, here's the head-on footage and you can see Sunline laying in all over fairway down the straight. Explain what happened there. Yeah, well, um, Greg, Greg was <laughs> doing everything to try and sort of, I guess, beat me, but um, I, I, I probably would have won it in the steward room on Didn't a protest. You know, reasonably firm, it was loose on the surface. Is that correct, boys? I mean, Greg here rode on the track and so did you, Darren. Yeah, I, I think the track was... You had to have a horse that could handle soft conditions. Um, even though 
you know, wasn't down confident in that sort of ground. I rode horses Ponton Flyer, she never handled it. El Morada, he never handled it. It became, uh, you know, mainly you had to be up in the pace. So uh, it was hard to make up ground even though... Yeah, Sunline doesn't lose any admirers, I don't think, because no. she, she gets beaten every now and again. She gets beaten in a race, but she usually runs second, Look, she, and she's, you know, they just, they can't win every time. She's brilliant, isn't she? And, yeah. and every year you bring her back, she just gets bigger and better, and I am... Jockeys after the Turnbull. Disappointing, we didn't win. Um, we tried, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and Lee will just sit half a length behind, and he slowed right down in the middle stages, yeah. and I thought, well, this is fine, because uh, we've got a good turn of foot, Sunline, and, uh, but I knew Fairway did too, because I seen him win the... The yeah. Donka, uh, the, the Derby, and we quickened up from the half mile, and it was a fair deacon battle. Um, but Fairway beat us fair and square. Yeah, he ran good. He uh, he ran good. He uh, he ran a nice race. He had a nice run in the race behind the first and second horse, and uh, come out in the straight. And I was a chance there for a while, but uh, two very good horses in front of me, and uh, okay, he's going to drop a lot of weight for a race like the Caulfield Cup. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, head out. Away, terrific training feat by Jack Denham. Aye. Well, when I got off him in, in the George Main, I said, there's either two things. Either he hasn't come up or he's just racing a bit down. And Jack said, don't worry, he'll be right by cut time. Don't worry, there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. Right up. Look at that boy, weight is right by the way. So gorgeous, 380 for the Edward Manifold. Very important lead up race for the Oaks. On the run, 50, 13, Blab. Airs, 68, six is a scratching. Dashing Granada, 33. All time high, $11, number eight. Stormy Summers 34, 48 for Love Dust. Symphonic Lady 53, 57 Shelbourne Lass. Calm Smitzer 11. Chicky. What are you fancying? Fancy? Well, I like uh, one and two, obviously. It is the obvious, but uh, they come through the Tranquil Star. That race is always the key guide to this. And both their performances that day were quite outstanding. So gorgeous cross from 14. Racing. So gorgeous, just welt a little towards the inside. Ez and Calm Smites are at OK. Lady Belvedere jumped into stride well, and Pont on Flyer is up there as well as they settle into stride now. And uh, it's Torpedo Gold dropped out to be a clear last. As so gorgeous, whipped up and took up the running early. Into second as Shelburne Lass, a couple of lengths. I'm high, and Chicky is last at the 800. And so gorgeous, led by three quarters of a length. Shelburne Lass is second to Lolita Star, who's in third placing in company with Ez and Calm Smites of between horses. A length and a half dashing Granada. Lady Belvedere is next on the outside from Blab as they corner. Two pot on fly, a love dust on the run. And they're followed by all time high Stormy Summers, Chicky, and one of the last symphonic lady as they corner with its torpedo gold. So gorgeous against the rail at the 400. Has kicked away about three lengths in front of Shelbourne Lass. Calm Smites are given her head. Down the outside comes Lady Belvedere. But so gorgeous heads to the 200 with a mighty lead. She's about three to four lengths in front. Lady Belvedere trying to get the second with Shelbourne Lass and dashing Granada. So gorgeous at the 100 is clear. She's two and a half on Shelbourne Lass. She's getting tired. So gorgeous. But she'll see it through. And so gorgeous beats Shelbourne last by a length dashing granada third all-time high fourth lady belvedere fifth then love dust and calm smites her, followed by lolita star it's torpedo gold stormy summers symphonic lady blab as well back so as pont on fly she didn't give a yelp next was chicky followed by on the run and ez dropped out to last so gorgeous nashville with an end uh, and it was all worthwhile and a little release of uh, exuberance from Nash might just cost him a few dollars but it would so gorgeous Darren rode the favorite Ponton Flyer and he's already stated uh, that uh, Ponton Flyer did not handle uh, the track conditions by the way uh, Philly she's she's come over here she's cleaned up the Colts cleaned up all the other Phillies um, mile the 1600 meters yesterday they did give her a soft run in front didn't they Greg she had a lovely run in uh, front I was in the box I was behind her in the box seat and she had a very very easy run in front enjoyed it and then just sprinted home and had too much zip for him. Yep. And going to the line here, yeah, she's probably had enough on the line. She probably won't get past, you know, the 1,600 metres. You'd have to say that 2,000 was probably going to be beyond her. But, uh, you know, she'll, uh, she'll put up a, uh, a, a real good show in the uh, 1,000 guineas, and it'll take a good filly to beat her. Yeah, and if would, I think if you keep letting this filly have a soft lead like that, yeah. because I drew beside her yesterday, she, she drew one and two. No, 
Uh, who said that? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> producer just asked Greg, can she be unworldly? And Greg just said no. No, anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted there, guys, back there at the studio, um, uh, the, the uh, what would, if, well, you, if they've given us a soft lead, mind your own running around at the moment aren't, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't at the top quality as they were a few years back. So I think uh, the pull on the weights, he's got 49 kilos, I think he's, he's a hope for winning today. Well, you nearly caused an upset in the big one on Monday, the board Chinoy. Yeah, he's, um, he's a good little horse, you know, and, and I was always pretty... He looks like he's peaked for today, he looks magnificent. Yes, sure, he's not a horse that needs a lot of work. John, what do you think? Yeah, with him. But to be able to come back after... In now here's Ronnie coming up, Lynn Beasley aboard. He moved. This should be it. The gates fly back, Steel Phoenix a shade slow to go and was bustled forward shortly after the start. Able Master near the inside away quickly. Pastor Express away fast. JBJ going quickly with Steel Phoenix. Bias Bay one from the outside. It is riding out six deep, travelling forward. So they race to the post. Bias Bay about four out leads the way from his mark and Bias Bay is highballing in front. It's Bias Bay by three quarters on ears. Ronnie sticking to him. A length away, JBJ and Marshall is right behind them on Pastor Express. Then came Munts going up on Coco Cabana. He's got York in a pocket on Steel Phoenix and two lengths away. Then is Citrus Prince, Able Master on the fence. Two lengths to Liberty Hall, Super Revenue. Prophet's Kiss wide, starting a run. Then came Edward Bray, well back Ancient City Tributes. They were followed by Classified and last of all in the Metropas, Kazakh Bill. Business end coming up now. It's Ears Ronnie moving up to Bias Bay. Three out on the track, Pastor Express, who's been put back in a pocket by Coco Cabana, looming dangerously. Then Citrus Prince and Liberty Hall hits the others from Steel Phoenix. Over the rise and months now, pop the question to Coco Cabana. Coco Cabana a length in front of Citrus Prince. Pastor Express and Ears Ronnie still there. Coco Cabana Cabana in front, Pastor Express on the fence trying to level up, Coco Cabana in front, it's going to be five, Metrops for Gay Waterhouse, Coco Cabana clear of Pastor Express and Coco wins the Metrop, Coco Cabana from Pastor Express and Citrus Prince, Ancient City and Liberty Hall next from Ears Ronnie and JBJ from Prophet's Kiss, then Steel Phoenix, Edward Bray, Tributes, Kazakh Bell, Super Revener, Able Master, Bias Bay and Classified was last home. Beautiful ride by Chris Munts. When it comes to the big staying races at Group 1 level, Chris just has that wonderful ability to be able to get a horse in the right spot at the right time. Having done it for her in Coco Cabana by Cassidy. Big sensation. The ratings trifecta in order, so good value there. Five, two, four, Coco Cabana, Pass to Express, Citrus Prince. Tony Brassel has had a big day as well. That was his special for the day. Best bet. But I hate to throw cold, cold water on everyone's parade, but it, it isn't a great guide oh, really? for the Cups in... Uh, in uh, Victoria, the Metropolitan. It's a pretty ordinary guide as uh, generally, and I think Tappy would agree with that, that it's not the greatest. But I think it was a bit stronger this year, Rich. Was it? I did appear to be a little I stronger than in previous years. That that mare has come come down to the southern states as a, a filly, three-year-old filly last year, and, and didn't really fire down here. But she was a bit tired. She had uh, she had already won the the Australian. Say, so, yes. Are we going to have a vintage Melbourne Cup? Uh, I think that we will not have a vintage Melbourne Cup unless one of the Europeans comes down here and gives us a toweling. So that hey, mare hey, could be very competitive. Could hey, be. Hey, Richie. Yes? Very competitive. Could hey, be. Hey, Richie. Yes? Okay, I just um, <laughs> want to correct you, mate. Um, you said the Metrop's not really good form. Hang on. Uh, time. Excuse come me. On, come on. Don't go back to 19. Come on. You led with your chin here, buddy. You right. led with your chin. You led with your chin. Right. Natsky did run second in a Melbourne Cup. Didn't, didn't win they? it. Oh, no. Did win? Or did that run second? Run second. Um, Doremus run second uh, Didn't win in, it. In, in the Metrop. You haven't come up with a winner yet. No, but I'm saying I, 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 oh, I said what, the what form out. out of the Metrop is generally pretty You've good. You've shut for your mouth Cup. off. You right haven't right? come up Stately. with a winner. Stately. Nothing Stately. like a Dane. Hey, hey I won it. In the lead up Did he win it that year? He ran third. third. It's well, always a good one. form race. If you're running the places in the so. Metrop, it's a good form race. It, they get the mileage into them. Come on, Richard. Come Metro, on. You're look, as a rule, you. you'd have to say Metrop winners don't win it. No, uh, the last, Richard, for your edification, <laughs> yes. was McDougal. What year was that? 1959, Darren. That's even before you <laughs> were born. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, here's another one. Hey, I, Caulfield hey, Cup. Hey, I, winner. Caulfield Cup, yes. Yes, he did win the Caulfield Cup. And that I, was said back that, I said that you missed that. 83 or something? Nicholas John. 
Uh, yeah, you're stretching now, buddy. <laughs> Ming Dynasty, Ming Dynasty Nicholas, Nicholas John Locke. How, so how many do you want, Rich? Oh, we'll look at on the seventh at Randwick. Easy rocking. This is the short. Sky Hero and or Leon. One, five, eleven. All rate a hundred ahead of seven Bradshaw on ninety-three. Easy rocking is at three sixty seventeen guineas. Ab initio twenty. Padstow nine twenty. Shy Hero eight twenty. Stanzaic nine. King of Acapulco eight eighty. Upright seventy five. Ten dollars about all Leon. Normal practice at forty seven and Field City twenty eight. The uh, presentation it was a very emotional presentation for Gun. He's first up today. Trial very well recently. He's a real roll. Racing, easy rocking, fast away. Ab initio, Pittance won the start from upright and all line and Shy Hero whizzing through. All line leads the way, going up fast, Shy Hero. Ab initio, three out, then came Pittance. On the fence is Guineas from Stan Zake. Steel City going up on the rail, well back, Bradshaw. They were followed by upright, easy rockings, well back and wide from Padstow, King of Acapulco, and normal practice. Shy Hero led the way at the 600 metres mark with Ab initio second, or line third, Pittens three wide and fourth. Stan Zake wide out, Guineas between runners, Steel City on the fence from Bradshaw, upright, easy rocking, coming wide. They were followed well back by Padstow, looking for an inside run, then King of Acapulco and normal practice. Shy Hero on top of the rise, got away, led two lengths, Ab initio, wall line, Pittens. Down the centre is Bradshaw coming with a strong run from Guineas, and back on the inside, Steel City, Shy Hero's running out under pressure. He's still in front of Brad. Bradshaw, Pittance getting through, Bradshaw's move to the leaders, getting the inside run, Guineas, Guineas and Bradshaw, Bradshaw wide apart, hit the lead, Bradshaw wins the shorts. Bradshaw has done it for John Hawks to give him the trifecta, Guineas second and third flying upright, then came Ab Initio, he might have even got the first four yet. They were followed by Pittance behind those Steel City, then Easy Rocking, Shy Hero, well back was all line, in company with King of Acapulco, Padstow, Stan Zake and Normal Practice last home. John Hawks, very promising galloper, only 10 starts, he's now won seven. And John's here today, but uh, Jack Ingham's here, so let's go to John Tapp, who's with... Pinnacle of Australian horse racing, and when you're the nation's leading trainer, it's the peak of your career as well. But tonight, John Hawks is feeling about as low as you can get. One of his most promising horses has been put down, and another retired after injuries in track work. Counting the cost was a task far beyond the staff of Crown Lodge today. In five disastrous minutes before dawn, the spring carnival dreams of John Hawkes were shattered. Unworldly, the most exciting racehorse in the country, was put down after breaking a leg in track work at Warwick Farm. Larry Cassidy, our jockey, was just easing her at the line and uh, she snapped her off falling. Um, shocking thing to happen to uh, any horse, but one of her potential, it's just shattered us. Privately rated the stable's most exciting prospect since the mighty octagonal. Unworldly's potential was on full display just eight days ago in the Group 1 flight stakes. But Sydney's glamour filly, Unworldly had moved up and she had raced to pick a lean. Unworldly in front of pick a lean, Lady Mulan wide out with actress Donna Dior, but Unworldly's going to be too good. With a record of five wins from six starts, the three-year-old was to have travelled to Melbourne tonight, where the thousand guineas and oaks appeared at her mercy. The loss devastating owners and breeders Jack and Bob Ingham. The untapped potential of that filly, you know, it, we just don't know how much we've lost with that. Within five minutes of Unworldly's demise, disaster also at Flemington. Doncaster winner over, injuring a sesamoid in work. His career finished. Worst day of our racing career so far, that's all I want to say. Over would have started near favourite in Saturday's Turak handicap at Caulfield. Today's tragic events cap a disastrous couple of days for the Hawks stable, with BRC Oaks winner Tributes retired yesterday with tendon trouble. Rug Mr. Cranbon from Madam Plume, 93, Ultra Smug, 93, and Mrs. Bentley rates with 90. Now to the betting. Brave Chief, 20, Sheer Kingston, 21. Last year's winner with Greg Hall on screen there at the moment. Ultra Smug, the grey in the background. Jimmy Cassidy, another grey as you do. Dead. Plume joined them on the outside. A lot of be run at a real course record pace. This away they go. 
And one of the first out, Madam Plume and Brave Chief began well with our unicorn. Captivator out there began fast. Flush got away well on the inside in company with Merlin's Law, Mudajar and Yammer. When they settled down into stride, Ultra Smug went right across. Kingston down the back and Brave Chief by two and a half. Figurehead is running second at the 800. Captivator a half length away third. Three lengths to our unicorn fourth and then Merlin's Law. Mudajar sixth the outside followed by Yammer. Then came Ultra Smug improving his place around Madame plume and ill don followed by flushed as you do is a long way back with our needles mrs bentley next to last as they neared the corner and sheer kingston as last brave chief round the turn two lengths in front captivator and figurehead are both under the whip behind him merlin's law next and then follows murajar Madame Plume pulled to the outside as they enter the straight. Yammer's needing a run in the straight. Brave Chief at the 200, led by two figurehead captivated Murajar. Down the outside, Madame Plume and Ultra Strike, but Brave Chief is still clear 100 out. He's three lengths clear from figurehead. Yammer's coming home late, but Brave Chief all the way. Brave Chief takes out the cup from Yammer second, figurehead third. Then our needles, captivator, Ultra Smug, Ildon, and next Murajar from As You Do, Madame Plume. And they were trailed then by our unicorn. On Merlin's Law, well back as he's run them into the ground. Number two, Brave Chief has taken out the cup to pay 19.10 and 5.20. A front running ride by Patrick Payne has got Brave Chief home. He was never going to be beaten in hindsight. Second, number five, Yammer, written by Nick. And third is the horse, Astra Willer, who won it last year. And third is the horse that Nash won this cup on last year, Figurehead. Written by Greg Hall, 250 to place the Quinella 5660 and the trifecta 961 dollars. Close. But for Australia's Joe Two fouls along nine Mannington each rate 100, six Miss Penny Money, which is out, and seven Far Rain. Here's the tote call. Number one is Natoire 28, three dollars foul Valon, a point 28 dollars four out. Mr Bombastic 12, six is out. Far Rain 260, Super Elegant 22 dollars. Number eight and Mannington three dollars and seventy cents for race four at Corfu, where the track where the track has been downgraded to dead. As a yeah. uh, look, I like Valvalon here. I, I think his wet track form holds up a bit. He was uh, beaten only 0.8 of a length here in the Oakley Plate on what was rated as a slow track that day. So uh, wouldn't give up on Valvalon in, in uh, soft going. And you reckon, Mr. Bomb? Far rain. We've got to take her on trust first time back. But uh, you know, I think it'd be a great race. Okay, Rich. All right. In she goes. Now Mannington is ready. Ready and racing now. Far rain out fairly on the inside. Natoire, one of the first out. Mannington began brilliantly from her outside barrier. Just behind them, Felvalon hunting up along the inside, followed closely by Super Elegant. And back behind those, then Far rain pushing up along the inside, followed by Point and Mr. Bombastic. Natoire led them though. Felvalon nearly a length away, second on the inside. Mannington a handy third. One Far rain has got up on the fence to fourth now, followed then by Super Elegant, Mr. Bombastic, and a length of Point. Seven lengths covered them at the turn. Where Felvalon railed through to join Natoire, Mannington third, then Super Elegant. Too far rain, who's fifth on the inside as they corner, and then Mr. Bombastic. Felvalon railed beautifully and kicked away on him at the 250. He shot two and a half in front now from Natoire. Mannington next, far rain struggling, but to Felvalon 100 it goes four lengths in front. Mannington getting up to second, and then Super Elegant and Natoire, but it's all Felvalon in the run home. He's cruised in, eased up Felvalon by two Mannington, Super Elegant third, then Natoire and Mr bombastic long break in the field to a point and another break to far rain who was struggling a long way out she didn't begin well as she did in the lightning and she struggled home out and win very handsomely in 58.07 on a dead track if you don't mind Two Felvel and uh, we saw that pat two Felvel and uh, we saw that pattern again. The horses up on the pace were uh, were very hard to get past. Wasn't he travelling coming to the home turn? He was. He's uh, he's a great racehorse. He's got a great first up record. You see him just trotting around there. Damien's bringing him back to scale, and uh, he'll go on now. I would say to the Salinger Stakes at uh, Flemington over the the Cup meeting there, and uh, be very. She was got through the going just okay. She, but um, I certainly think she's better on top of the ground. Twelve hundred down the straights. Yeah. Uh, next time. Enough about the losers. What about the winner? Mate, he's a very serious racehorse, this horse. And like you said, it's hard to believe he hasn't won in Group 1, but um, I'm sure when he, he'll crack it very soon. Yeah, if that was up the straight, 
would it have been a, a different race? Well, I think she would probably be more suited up the straight, 1200, on top of the ground yesterday. Reed Chappy was uh, with far rain. Yeah. Uh, she bled, she bled uh, fortunately. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Penny I guess it could be out. the end for her, even. Yeah, Miss Penny Money came out late scratching because of the changing condition of the track, but far rain will now have a, is a mandatory three months suspension, yeah. mm. and she'll probably, I would think, go to stud. You, this you think that's I would think that would be a likely race. scenario. Hey, uh, Glenn, we often hear Caulfield, Justin? Yeah, I rode here in the 89. Uh, but no, not a lot of rides at all. Yeah, the, the track's probably been changed, I think, since then, so uh, it'll be a unique experience for you and Universal Sprint. Yeah, um, you know, it was, it was good for both of us on Thursday to come out here. It's got a beautiful camber. Um, camber. Um, but, you know, uh, the pattern... But this, uh, the rain between that previous and now, Steve, it really did buck it down. Yes, yeah, it's been pretty solid, Andrew, which is very unfortunate, not only for today, but for the week uh, leading into the first day, of course, of the three days of the Caulfield Cup. The track's going to get cut up. They're probably going to have to jiggle with the rail for 1,000 guineas and Cup Day. Um, early races, I guess, have suggested that you've got to be up on the pace, but they have, of course, been sprint races, track depth. Luca gets through it. Oxford dollar 390. Prince Benbara into eight dollars and fifty cents and has been well uh, tried here yippee i o nine and down on the inside prince ben barra began okay with behemoth no pace at all from yippee i o dropping back to the tail el cabello bounded away quickly looking for the lead in the early part oxford dollars jumped all right uh, but he's working his way up towards the front. Majestic Avenue not far off them. There's Dan Aziva from the outside barrier. Uh, he's speeding right across the pack, 15 off the leader. On the inside, then Magic Winner's been three deep the whole way around Rebor, a couple of lengths away to Bulkhead and the Hind struggling up the side. And three lengths away, Yippee Yo Yo, Bohemoth and Skybo. They're all battling away. El Cabello's got a lot of these off the bit at the 600. He leads by two and a half. Majestic Avenue chasing resolutely. Couple of lengths to uh, Prince Aluka getting up to third from Oxford Dollar. Evil Empire's losing ground. There's Bulkhead with his run round the outside. He's coming home well. And then Magic Winner as they came round the home turn. Prince Ben is a long way back. El Cabello being tackled by Majestic Avenue. Two lengths to Bulkhead still coming home from Prince Aluka. Oxford Dollar plugging away on the inside. Majestic Avenue at the 200 leads. Two lengths to Bulkhead. Prince Aluka. And then the hind coming home down the outside. Majestic Avenue led. He's two lengths clear from Bulkhead. Prince Aluka and then the hind from Behemoth coming home, but Majestic Avenue is clear for Glen Boss, and Majestic Avenue beat Bulkhead by two. Behemoth has been a charging finishing run into third place, a real eye catcher him. Then Yippee Io, who also worked home well from behind. Then Prince Aluk, a long break to Oxford Dollar, struggled. El Cabello knocked up, Magic winner wide. Then trailed Skybow, back to the tail end of the field, Prince Ben Barra and Evil Empire. Long break rip. Have a look at those for you. The Quinella, 98.60. $2,566 being the trifecta, 9.13. Like that, a very stout stayer. Majestic Avenue beating Bulkhead and Behemoth who changed stride and got on the wrong leg in the straight. Winning trainer, Tony Noonan. Probably that race was a little bit um, below like B, B plus graders, I suppose. Um, it was a real plus just to keep everybody. I know, sweet, but, I'm, didn't you? I, but I don't think I'm talking out of school here. That was a slogging race. Um, he was probably in the right place at the right time, this horse, and he's a very good old stayer who liked the conditions. Are these Melbourne or Caulfield Cup, Cup class horses? No. I you don't. don't? No. Not at all. Well, that's at odds with you, Greg. Well, it is at odds with me because I reckon Bohemoth has turned in one of the best Melbourne Cup trials we've seen all spring. Uh, he got a long, long way back. The stewards actually queried uh, Darren Beedman and Jim Cassidy, who rode EPIO, as to why they got so far back because they couldn't see. Yeah, it was they very wet. I probably shouldn't have said no there. Remember the year that Robbie Griffiths said. Uh that Jern wouldn't run two miles. <laughs> I probably, I shouldn't so, take that back. But so you know, we back. never forget. I know, <laughs> it's, on, it's on camera. But oh, I would... Provider's half brother. Now, Show a Heart, number one, is the top raider and certainly comes into it with the track conditions now, being downgraded. Fubu, pieces, starts and trail. One from five, eight and four. Show a Heart, $6.40. Universal Prince 11, 7.30 Phoenix Park, starts and trail 10, Fabu 6.60, 40 Little Dozer, Senate Pete $31, pieces at $10, number 8. We have 9, Sale of Century 33, 10 out, 56 Shot of Thunder, 39 Our Winged Foot, Para Diddle 24, 14 for Make Me a Miracle. Galata 7.70 and debrief at Factor. I think that Stephen King will go forward on Show a Heart. There's not huge speed in this Caulfield Guineas. There's a couple will go forward. Probably Phoenix Park, Fabu and Pieces are the best drawn to box seat. 
I've been a bit, I've been a bit wishy-washy all day today. I'm happy to back Show a Heart. I think he's an outstanding horse. I think he's gutsy. He finds. Well, I, I, I'm sticking with Scalato. He's been my tip. I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to trust him on the on the wet going. Uh, I know it. As they're getting set, unfortunately, the rain has ruined some of the chances, particularly Sarsen Trail, I guess, with a track that's got to be bordering on uh, slow by this stage. Big push has come for show of heart. The Queensland has been clearly the best backed in the race despite the wide barrier. And it's and, a, and away. Show of heart began well. The favourite over near the outside. And Phoenix Park ridden for speed in the early part. Bounded out and led from Fubu. Pieces and Scalato and Shot of Thunder is up there about fifth or sixth. Debrief is shooting across towards the front as well. And they're closely followed by our wing foot. Show of hearts on the improve. Wide out towards the front as they go to the tarot. little well back from Make Me a Miracle. And Sale of Century two lengths away last at the 800. Debrief on the outside. And Phoenix Park share the lead. Little Dozer is third. They're followed by show of heart going up fourth on the outside of pieces two lengths in at pete shot of thunder next with sarsen trail the outside fubu down on the rail worse than midfield they're followed by air wing foot make me a miracle then came universal print spotting them a fair start with scalato down on the inside paradiddle in sale of century as they swing the corner in the guineas debrief the outside and phoenix park in front of show of heart who's under the whip pieces just behind them from fubu and then came sarsen trail and shot of thunder trying to get into the clear flat Little Dozer, it's at the 200 metre mark, Phoenix Park, and debrief the outside, Show of Heart coming at them Scalato diving up on the inside Show of Heart's hit the front, Scalato's grabbed him on the rails, Scalato diving up along the fence, spears away and it's Scalato's guineas by two lengths to Show of Heart, Fubu's a neck away third, uh, then came Sale of Century flying home for fourth next in pieces, debrief, Phoenix Park, our wing foot, followed by Universal Prince, Sarsen Trail struggled in the going, in behind the those horses to finish was Make Me a Miracle, Senate Pete, Little Dozer, and Shot of Thunder, one of the last in, in company with Paradiddle. The win. Yeah, it was fantastic. I, I was a fair way back. I said, can't win, can't win. I said, the, we did say the paddy late before we went out. I think the fence is good as anywhere, and I think he's a pretty special horse. Second up over a mile. Did you did you have this race, or what? Uh, what do you mean, do we have Well, I race? mean, uh, second up over a mile is a big effort, isn't it? Yeah, we're just still learning how to train horses, and we're coming along okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing at Gagey, you've just won the games, Clary. Yeah, he's a pretty special horse, and I, I think he's a great horse, and he's just, you're going on great things. He's pretty unlucky to, uh, to not win his previous start, and, uh, you know, we're behind the eight ball we were, but we were training for the race, and things went right. Straight on to the Amy Derby now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, well done, Clary. Thank you. For your next Caulfield Guineas winner, you've got to draw a good gate. Third, what about the horse that came from last, Sale of Century? Well, that's, a, that's an excellent run, isn't it? Came Gibby? from last and a distinct last. You, you might be watching Sale of Century in the derby. That might be a bit of a derby trial, that, uh, that run. So uh, I was talking just under trifecta, $368. And uh, Patrick Payne has um, just... And um, uh, I had a, a lap full of horse, so I was always pretty confident. On to the Amy Victoria Derby now. Yeah, uh, you'd have to, you have to think like he's only had two runs in from a spell. But as we said before the race, he's had a nice preparation. He trialled probably a month ago, and I've been working him for the last six weeks or so. So I don't think it's beyond him. Okay. If he's done this second up at a mile, you, you couldn't say that the derby's not within you, his scope. You would think, I agree with you, Gregor, you would think here you see him spearing through on the inside, and, and I agree with you, that was, there was a bit of luck involved in that. Paddy was cool and collected, but uh, he needed luck to get, uh, get those breaks and those splits along the fence. And he got a split along the fence, which proved to be the best part of the track. So, um, yeah, some luck there, but uh, the horse is flying. The horse was working brilliantly during the week, so, um, you know, I think the horse has got a real future ahead of him um, we saw um, I thought the run of uh, sale of century was good in the race Glad you got to him yeah it was it was a good run came from well back out where they weren't making ground and I, and I couldn't take much away from show hard either because uh, he traveled wide the whole way and um, I thought he battled on very very well very game it's eight Testa Rossa on top, ahead of one tie the knot, six Susie please, nine Shogun Lodge, eight one six nine. Tie the knot, six dollars and fifty cents. Three eighty sky high, solid the twist ten dollars. Georgie boy, eighteen dollars all the way out. We've got Scusi please, five thirty, Magneto, twenty-one, Testa Rossa, five dollars ninety.
So we've got Shogun Lodge at 12, Freemason $14, Camarina $18. Joining us here on Sky, Steve, uh, My other what are you uh, what are you tipping here? We're only about a minute or two minutes from race time. I'm very keen on number one, Tyler Not Andrew. I think he does handle the rain-affected tracks. Uh, a lot of people think he performs in a lesser fashion in Melbourne, but his record here at Caulfield is fine. He won the Underwood away for age race. He's run a slasher in a Caulfield Cup. I think uh, that the fact that he'll get a little bit of cover today. Just running a tad late for this for the Yalumba. This is race seven of nine here at Caulfield. The Yalumba starts for Tyler the Knot here. He has been backed for a fortune. Tyler the Knot, very, very heavily supported. Shogun Lodge and racing in the Yalumba. Scusi plays one of the first outs. Guy Heights out fairly, has to be bustled early. Testarossa dropped out to be last early. Georgie Boys away fast, looking for the lead over Scusi please. Camarina Magneto fourth. Then Sky Heights going forward quickly to fifth after a slightly slow beginning. He's around Oliver Twist. About three lengths to Shogun Lodge. Yuma line two lengths down. Georgie Boy by a length and a half. Camarina. Sky Heights doing it hard early. He's out three wide. Over on the inside, Scusi please fourth. Two lengths, Oliver the knot and two Testarossa by the 900 metres onto the railway side now in the Alumba and Georgie Boy put them down about a neck clear. Sky Height second, Scoozy please the rail third around at Camarita. Then Magneto and Oliver Twist two lengths further back as Shogun Lodge niggled at the inside of Yuma Line. Freemason pulled out white, tie the knot is over on the rail second last nearing the home corner and last is Testarossa by the 600. Still Georgie Boy led narrowly from Sky Heights Camarina. Oliver Twist coming into it round the outside followed by Scoozy, please, Magneto. Shogun Lodge getting into the clear. Tie the knot, waits on a run down on the inside as they swing the corner. Still Testarossa last. Homeward bound and Sky Heights shot to the lead. Sky Heights went out by a couple. Scoozy, please, in the clear from Oliver Twist. Then Camarina. Tie the knot's got to the outside, but a fair way back with Shogun Lodge. Sky Heights in front, 100 out. He's done some work. He's two lengths clear. Scoozy, please, Oliver Twist. Tie the knot and Shogun Lodge coming, but Sky Heights is racing brilliantly. Sky Heights clear and he takes it out a great win by two lengths tie the knot might have grabbed second shogun lodge scoozy plays close up with camarina and then came oliver twist magneto followed further back by freemason testa rossa a break georgie boy and yuma line a long last he's had probably the hardest run of any horse in the race and yet he's told them number two sky heights and glen boss have taken out the alumba stakes it's sort of uh, confident enough to sort of uh, do much about it. And I think it's going from there, you'll, you know, kick their brains out of Cox Plate, Hong Kong, wherever you like now. What do you think? Sunline. There's a word. Got a chance, yeah. yeah. Got a chance. Beat her. Well, it's a nice softish track, even so she likes it. I think we can now, for sure. We beat her once and before, and then the Cox Plate, we were, last year we were trained for the Melbourne Cup, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. The answer is yes, I, th yes, I think we can. Okay, well done, Andrew. Uh, Andrew now, well, Andrew Ramsden, one of the owners here, has come out and said we can beat Sunline and we can win the Cox Plate, so time will... And, uh, today, even though he was a little bit slow to begin, he still worked up and, uh, you know, the horses will work up the hill here yeah. and still go on and win. It's a bloody good effort. And so I, you weren't put off by that being three wide at some point there going up the hill? No, he's he's a better horse rolling forward, you know, and I think... Uh, Glenn the might and power who dominates real early, but he's a type of horse who can run very good sectionals over a long distance like he, from the 1200 he'll just keep running those good sectionals and continue to do it every furlong which gets horses in the backpack having them do a little bit now this is your third group one on success on on uh, sky height yeah i've had uh, five rides on in our shadow and three group ones um I mean, like I said, it's it's great to be a part of a good horse. I mean, he's probably top three in Australia, uh, especially from a mile to a mile and a half. Um, I I think he's the ideal horse to uh, to challenge her. But don't forget the rest of the field. I think this is a vintage Cox Plate this year, and there were some big runs behind behind him yesterday, and they're going to get conditions to suit as well on the day. Glenn, what about his starts? Uh, again, he wasn't all that flash away. No, it's a real worry, this. Um, I mean, it's OK when you draw wide, because if you blow the start, um, you can get into the race. Because he was able to make ground up the hill yesterday and sort of comfortably get into the race. But 
If you miss the start and you're drawn inside and horses cross you quickly, I'll tell you what, it takes away your game plan a bit. Yeah. But um, Colin's going to work on that and we'll have him right. Did Could you he do did the work he did yesterday? And you've really emerged. It was a satisfying effort for sure. Um, I mean, the conditions probably suited Sky Heights today and also um, tie the knot with a, with a given the track. I mean, it was probably getting close to slow the track. And I mean, for a horse that doesn't handle it, he's, he's battled on remarkably well. And yet it seemed coming to the turn you might have Super run, Clem. Um, he got back, he travelled really nicely and um, come into the race nice and it was, you know, obviously it was a bit sort of, a bit biased there on the fence and um, the other sky heights got away from me but I really liked the way he got out and sort of mixed it with him and, and uh, got down to the line nicely and uh, he had a pretty good blow after run so that'll top him off nice. A fortnight ago the shapes up uh, Sunline yeah. 6 to 4. Sky Heights 4 to 1. Yeah, he's been a big shortener. He was 8 a couple of days ago. Was he? Mm. Yeah. Well, just a 5, bring it to 4. Shogun Lodge run yesterday with 9 to 2. Uh, Tides are not 5 to 1. Fairway 5th. Spoke to him about the 3 56, 21 lorries, Lockery, La Zagaleta 7 20, 52 for Slavonic, number 8. We have 9, Chattanooga 14, Crawl at $10, 45, Delirious, Vetti Via 41, Akabilk 16, 30, Beat the Scratching, Panoramic Letters out and Porter Rocker at $25. Nose band on and the tongue tie off in a bid to try and get her to resurrect her very good form. Uh, best tried in the race, Go Flash Go and Umrum. A couple of horses that have drawn well will get a run on them. Some horses making ground from the back. It really has been uh, a, a case of being on the speed if you're going to win here today, I feel. Now, moving up, singing. And Delirious away well on the inside with Umrum and Go Flash Go both beginning quickly. Going forward in the early part as Laurie's Lottery looking for a place right on the speed with Mr. Innocent. Beat the fade not far off them, followed by Slavonic and Acker Bilk. Chattanooga's pushing up in the centre as they settle fully into stride. Second last in two and a half. L.A. Suez at the 7.50 and Umrum led by half a length. Running second, Laurie's Lottery. Mr. Innocent has trapped out three wide. Just behind them, Go Flash Go. He's had a good run and then came Beat the Fade. One Lazagaleta the Grey, followed by Delirious over on the inside from Gold Guru Slavonic. Crawl around Vetivia. Chattanooga needing some luck from there. Followed by Porter Rocker, Acker Bilk and L.A. Suez. Up the 400 metre mark and Umrum slipped a couple of lengths in front he traveled okay um rum he shot three in front round the home turn now from go flash go la zagaleta pulled to the outside and then Laurie's lottery delirious crawled to the outside with gold guru had a bump but um rum with a big lead 150 to go he's four lengths in front from go flash go crawl the outside from gold guru and in chattanooga but um rum's going to make it back to back turax and um rum's won it running away by three and a half to go flash go second crawl i think grab third from chattanooga photo there then Acker, Bilk and Delirious trailed further back by behind these Gold Guru, La Zagaleta, Porter Rocker and L.A. Suez. Long break, Slavonic, Mr. Innocent, Vetti Via. And then came Laurie's Lottery and dropping out to last was Beat the Fade. Race by Jimmy Cassidy has taken out the Turak handicap leading all the way. He won at last handicap leading all the way. He won it last year with 55 from Barrier 19. He's repeated the dose with a better draw and has given Jim Cassidy his third Turak handicap win after scoring on Comrade and Marble Halls. And the track definitely has improved during the day. OK, let's go to Andrew today. Yeah, well, he has led in the past. Um, as a three-year-old, he used to lead. We tried to make him settle. Yeah. Um, but today, he's just began well and the rest, you know, the rest is history. And got moment. 10 50 the trifecta, $190.30. Just before I speak more with Richard, let's... It, it found the fence. 100 home, and it was always going to be hard for them to get home from behind. Takes the six-year-old just past the $1 million prize money mark. Let's hear... You're right, fantastic, Pete. Yeah, that's right, Clem. And he, he was probably a little bit unlucky that, um, two years ago. He struck a very uh, heavy track and raced down near the fence and run a close third in a race. So it could have been three times in a row. That'll be next year. <laughs> well, that's right. But it is a great training feat to get the horse right each year. 
he's a great spring horse. He races every spring. He's, he's never raced in ordinary company. He's always raced against the top class, and it's not very... ...out than uh, you would pretty often in a, in a big group one mile, but he had it one a long way out there. There were a few good runs in the race, even though uh, he's won by about four lengths. I think Crawl's run was just uh, outstanding, really, to make up the ground he did. And uh, Umrum Stable, mate, Gold Guru, he never got on the track. He just might be starting to come back to a little bit of form, I thought. So every chance of that. But uh, I had to... I just cutting over you there, Joe, for a second. I, there was a... That's, that's all right. I had a... Uh, a there was a real pattern that had emerged by then too. Horses on the fence seemed to have a big advantage. They seemed to be able to keep going on the fence from the from the leading position, yeah. whereas well, the horses out makes, wider on the track weren't making any ground. That's what makes Crawl and Golguru so good yeah. up in this race. Yeah, anything that tra travelled wide in that race just uh, ha had a great deal of trouble making up making up ground. Glenn, um, beat the fade. I think, well, I mean, the track was obviously... Actually, surprisingly, when we were in, going to the barriers for the first race, I commented to Stephen King, I said, this track feels almost dead now. Yeah. And, like, we'd only had a little bit of rain, and the day before it was rock hard. Yeah. So... I think we had the, if we had the rain the day before, the track would have rode nice, but because we had the rain on what was essentially probably a rock-hard track, it became quite greasy. The one uh, with the rain, Andrew Bensley caught up with a train. Andrew Bensley caught up with a track manager, uh, Terry Watson, and here's what he had to say. We're doing it the rail, but at this stage, I think our original plan uh, to have the rail where it is in the true position for Wednesday, mm. uh, I think we'll still go down that track and then move it out six metres for Caulfield Cup Day. OK, now, there's been a lot of bias and things like that. Today, people are saying it's been biased to the front markers. As a track manager, what do you say, Terry? Well, I think it's very hard to describe bias. I mean, today they've been um, running into a very strong headwind in the straight. That can, that can affect, I mean, I call it a wind bias. Mm. Uh, not the track itself. Um, and I think that the way the track's performed today, um, yeah, I suppose it could be said that there's been a bias towards the front. But uh... I hear what Terry says, and, and, and Terry's in the same position as all track managers are. They've got an enormous amount of racing on their track. They're trying desperately to figure out ways to, to give a, a non-biased track, a completely fair track. And while there's so much racing and the track surface becomes so loose over period of time because they have so many race meetings across the whole profile of the track um, there's not a lot track managers can do they just do their best the only way to allow them to produce a completely fair track that will cope with that sort of rain on the day um, is to have less racing on the track prior to those meetings and I just can't see that happening with the politics of racing as it is at the moment yeah. well, good run too